Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Hope you're having a good Thursday and week in general. Uh, one day delayed. This was originally supposed to be yesterday, but uh, now it's today, which means Alan Wake, sorry. <laughs> uh, you'll come up some other time. Like Master said, it's been on my list forever. So what's another few weeks at this point when it's been in my backlog for, I don't know, five years? Uh, we'll get to it when we get to it. Anyway, uh, welcome everyone again. Hope you're having a good day. Hello, Master, uh, Wasabi, Mooney, Jack, and Savvy. Welcome, welcome. Um, no problem at all about uh, lurking, Mooney. Like I said, I'm a big lurker myself, so I get it. I get it. I am too hydrated. Better to be overhydrated than not hydrated at all. But as long as it's not too, too hydrated, you know? Because I've heard bad things can happen if you are too hydrated. Um, as you can all see, there is a content warning uh, at the top of the home screen of this game, which I didn't know. <laughs> I know basically nothing about this game other than that it is kind of like a visual novel. Um where you're going to be making various choices. I think there's four different characters. I believe you can play as all four of them. And you're going to make choices throughout the story and come to an ending. And most of the endings, if not all of them, are bad endings. <laughs> so I'm hoping, I'm assuming there's a good ending. And the question is, how do you get to the good ending? Um, I don't know. Probably by going through most of the bad endings. I've seen a screenshot of like a flowchart. So if any of you have played like uh, Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward or 999 or Zero Time Dilemma, you're probably, or um, AI Somnium Files, that's another one. Like that type of timeline flowchart thing. I think this game has that. So I can jump around, make a different choice and see how that changes the story. Um, so yeah, I think it's just gonna be uh, an ongoing experience to see. I'm going to try and get pretty much every ending. I believe this is a game that you can finish in two to three hours. So I should completely finish it and hopefully see pretty much all the endings. Uh, <laughs> I, but yeah, most of them are going to be bad endings. So characters are probably going to die or have sad sacrifices or who knows. Um, but yes, Sebi, that would uh, uh, having COVID would do that. That is a bad ending. As somebody who has had COVID, I get it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole thing is like pixel art, Jack, so it's not like it can be that gratuitous, um, as far as I'm assuming, but yeah, it's a very pixel art art style, so. But anyway, I figured I would stick on this home screen when it started, just so people see it and are aware. Anyway. Let's just jump in. Four in the morning for me, and I can't for the love of God understand why are we having endings? <laughs> Hello, Bill Lincoln. Welcome to the stream. Four in the morning. My goodness. Are you up late or up early? That's the real question. Why did nothing happen when I pressed it? There we go. All right, <clears throat> up early, man, that is really early. I usually try and wake up at like 6.15, 6.30, at least on work days, um, but man, four in the morning. Props to you for being up that early. Good ending first try. You know, that would be the ultimate gamer move. Um, by the way, both Refine Self and Dance of Fire and Ice was ported to the Switch. Oh, really? Well, there you go. <laughs> if anybody in chat has a Switch and was interested in Refine Self or Dance of Fire and Ice, both of which I've played on stream before, albeit on PC, now you have an option. That's weird that they only ported it in Japan, though. Because I don't think it was a Japanese developer. Maybe it was. 
Um, all right. Welcome to Bad End Theater. On this stage, we shall be toying with fate. Fate? Like fate grand order? I just finished the new event. Or not new. It's been three weeks. I just finished the most recent event uh, earlier today. Uh, you will make many choices, unlocking darker and darker paths, all in order to witness a lovely variety of tragic events. But first, allow me to explain how it works. To begin the tutorial, select whatever doll you like. Uh, the human doll or the demon doll? Well, I'm a human, so... Woke up because I got hungry. That would do it. <laughs> Hopefully you have a good snack option, then. I just had some pizza half an hour ago. I know, very exciting. Fate? Nani? Shadow being voiced by Keanu. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a shocker or disappointing to people, but I don't think I have ever seen a movie that Keanu Reeves is in. I also have never seen any of the Sonic movies. And I think <laughs> I've played maybe two Sonic games ever, and I didn't beat either of them. I played Sonic Advance on the Game Boy Advance, and I played Sonic Mania on Switch. I probably got a couple levels into both. Um, yeah, I've just never really... I mean, I haven't given it a ton of chances, but... Yeah, I unfortunately can't say I have much of an opinion because of that. I'm not super familiar with the Sonic franchise or Keanu Reeves in general. Aside from memes, of course. But yeah, I've never seen The Matrix, and I've also never seen... Uh, What's that other really popular series that Keanu Reeves is the main guy in? There's like three or four of them. John Wick, yeah, that one. Um, but, you know, from what I do know of Shadow, probably not who I would have thought would be the voice of him. Similar to uh, how I would not have thought Chris Pratt would be Mario. <laughs> um, and also similar to how... I would not have expected Jack Black to be voicing a character in the Minecraft movie. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess they want big names to be these characters. Uh, you control the human doll. You're a friendly little guy. Just minding your own business. That's me. How will you interact with the demon doll? Attack it or play nice? Uh, I am not a confrontational person, so I'll play nice. You try to make friends with the demons all, but it kills you in cold blood. How ruthless. Great. <laughs> we are off to a great start. You found your very first bad ending. But don't worry, the story need not end here. Let's reset the stage and try again. Try controlling the other doll. Alright, I'll be the demon. You're a fierce looking guy just minding your own business. How will you interact with the human? I'm gonna play nice, because I'm a nice guy. And the demons, I mean, the human's gonna kill me, isn't it? Because it's a hero. You and the human doll are able to set aside your differences and become friends, okay. Not how I expected it to go. This isn't a bad ending at all. I should have written out this possibility. It's just not suited to my theater whatsoever. Now that you know how the story goes, you can set the doll's behavior in advance. What? Uh, as you just saw, the behaviors will automatically be set to what you chose during your last playthrough. But now you can turn each one on or off without having to replay from that doll's perspective. My theater doubles as a puzzle game. Okay. Try turning the behaviors on and off to see different outcomes. Oh, I see. So I can set the human doll to be hostile or not. And I can also set the demon to be wicked or not. So previously, I was not hostile, but the demon was wicked. And then the second time, I was not hostile, and the demon was not wicked. So the difference would be having the human be hostile, and the demon not wicked. Uh, you kill the demon... Okay, that makes sense. So, but what happens if 
He's hostile and he's wicked. They're both bad. Then what? You both attack each other at once and die together. Okay. Well, that's interesting that you can... Okay. So I guess you have to play through both perspectives to unlock the option. And then you can change how they act or their choices. Okay. I think I'm seeing how this goes. Well, I think we're good with the tutorial then. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Saves your progress automatically, so just relax and collect all the bad endings at your own pace. All right. Let's start the show. Wow, achievement unlocked. Completed the tutorial. Uh, so we have... Oh, and they all have a different behavior. So we have the hero, the maiden, the underling, and the overlord. Okay. Uh, you know, I feel like we have to start as the hero, right? That's the pretty typical... I'm not much of a hero, though. Actually, I am. I came back from the future to change the past to then affect the future, so that's pretty heroic. Einzul Gon. The Overlord movie comes out this year, I think. Uh, you are the hero. You like to think of yourself as a pretty reliable and swell guy. Your life has been rather ordinary, aside from occasional heroic adventures, fighting evil monsters and whatnot. You are told a maiden from your village has been kidnapped and is likely being held captive at the nearby demon overlord's castle. Who even puts a village right next to where an entire demon army hangs out? You don't get it. You're happy to protect the townspeople, though. You were born to play this role. You head off on your adventure to rescue the maiden. But demon soldiers block your path. You could kill them to gain experience. Do you bravely slaughter the evil creatures or feel like a coward? Leo is Link and the heroes from Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest, another popular series that I've never played a game from. That's the one that has that blue slime, right? And the main character is in Smash Bros? I think. Is my tea cool yet? Can I actually drink it without burning my mouth? Leo is no coward. I appreciate the vote of confidence, Wasabi. Also, is the volume okay? It sounds a little loud for me. Um, but I don't know how it is for you. Can I uh, slightly reduce the volume, perhaps? So I can actually hear myself think. Okay, that's a little better for me. I'll turn it back up for you guys, though. So you can let me know if it's too loud or not loud enough. My voice could be louder? Interesting. I guess it could also be because I'm tired. <laughs> um, it does look like it's not going up quite as much as it usually does, though. Alright, I bumped it a little bit. Fate Samurai got its second. Oh, yeah! I think I saw that. Uh, Yagyu. Yagyu Munanori. I still haven't gotten the first one, or gone back to play the other ending. I'll have to do that at some point. Uh, I'll bravely slaughter the evil creatures. You make quick work of the vile creatures who stood in your way. You feel much stronger now. After a long trek, you make it to the castle's front gates. You're faced with an army of demons that all look very intimidating. There's no way to sneak past these monsters if you want to reach the Overlord. Do you cut through the demon army, or ask if they'll let you in? I don't think the diplomatic approach is going to work, but I kind of want to try it. You attempt to explain why you've come, but the monster before you is eyeing you with suspicion. They can't help but notice the demon blood from earlier that you haven't had the chance to wash off yet. Whoops. Ah, yeah, that's, uh, that's not doing me any favors. You have no choice but to fight the army in self-defense. Oh well, more experience points for you. You make your way through the castle, fending off all the demons that stand in your way. The Overlord appears, demanding to know what the hell you're doing murdering all of her soldiers. 
You get straight to the point and ask where the maiden is. She feigns ignorance, a convincing act, but you won't be fooled. If the maiden isn't here, then what happened to her? You can only see one answer. The overlord definitely captured her. In fact, it's possible she's already been devoured. Thinking about that poor maiden's fate fills you with hatred. You fight the overlord with everything you've got. You've become strong from the hordes of demons you took down before this final battle. The overlord is almost no match for you. You cut her to pieces. The overlord has fallen. You breathe a sigh of relief, but your job is not yet finished. You search the castle. Unfortunately, you find no sign of the maiden within its walls. It's just as you suspected. She must have already been devoured. You feel hollow. A great evil has been banished from the world, but what does that matter if you were too weak to save someone? You stand alone amidst the carnage and ponder what does it mean to be a hero? You return to the Overlord's remains and wrap her head in your cape to bring back to the village. Surely your victory will be celebrated. Failed hero end. Wow, we already got an ending. And I'm a failed hero. Awesome. <laughs> that went well. Hero is bloodthirsty? He is. I even tried to be diplomatic and he still attacked them. Granted, that was because I attacked the first group. The Maiden was the Overlord? Now that would be quite the twist. Alright. So, I'm going to reset as the hero. Oh, so there's 41 endings. I see. I just got the first one. Oh, so you can see there's 11 bad ends for the hero, 9 for the underling, 11 for the maiden, and 10 for the overlord. Select a character to display the time. Ah, okay, see? So here's the flow that I was talking about before. So you can see here I did a full dutiful path, essentially. Right there. Ah. So right here, if I acted a different way, aka I actually found the maiden, then it would branch to a different path. But since I didn't find the maiden, I ended up at the first bad end up top. Flowchart, Detroit flashbacks. Oh, Detroit is another good flashback one, yeah. I like that one. Alright. So let's do the opposite this time. I am not going to instantly slaughter all of the demons. Alright, so I'm going to skip to the first choice again. So last time, I bravely slaughtered them. This time, I'm going to feel like a coward. Forgetting your pride, you escape with your life. But you can't return home now. Your reputation will be ruined. You wonder how you'll ever be able to rescue that maiden all on your own if you can't even fight some lousy demon underlings. You'll take your chances at the castle. You're a hero after all. This is your job. Okay, so this time... So we still end up at the castle. Uh, alright. So I'm going to be diplomatic again. Because now I'm not going to have the blood on my sword. Uh, you explain why you've come, they stare you down. But they seem to trust you, and they escort you directly to the Overlord's chambers. That was easy. Wow. Demons are reasonable. Go figure. The Overlord is alone. You ask about the Maiden, but the Overlord doesn't seem to know what you're talking about. Was she never really here? You wonder what could have happened to her. The Overlord says that she wishes she could help you, but you're the first human that's come here in forever, at least that she knows of. You think of how you probably shouldn't trust her, seeing as she's a demon after all. But you can't really prove that she's lying, either. You apologize for the intrusion and return home to your village. The maiden was never found. Wow. Useless hero end. <laughs> okay, so I kill all the demons and don't find her, or I'm nice to the demons and I don't find her. Awesome. Um... So that path brought me down this route. Oh, so it's lit up the path that I went. Okay. So I flee from the demons and then let into the castle without issue. But it's also blacked out here and then I got useless adventure. Muda, muda, muda. <laughs> useless 
Yes, evidently that is me. Leo the useless hero. Exactly, Oblivion, exactly. Also, hello, welcome. Hope you're having a good Thursday. Um, all right. So, can I like skip to this spot? No, I can't, okay. So what if, no, 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 I don't wanna exit. So what if I do the hero again? Oh, there's dutiful. Oh, so I can be dutiful and diplomatic? No, you can't. That's counterintuitive. Okay, so what if I'm nice? What if I run away from the first ones, but then I attack the second one? Does that change anything? So I'm going to flee like a coward. Then I encounter them, and I'm going to fight them. You gather your courage. This is mu what must be done to rescue the maiden. These are all evil demons anyway. The world is much safer with them gone. That's what you tell yourself while you kill one after another on your way to the Overlord's chambers. The Overlord appears, demanding to know what the hell you're doing murdering all her soldiers. You ask where the maiden is, she faints- Okay, so this seems like it's the same, actually. Ah, uh, you cut her to pieces, you breathe a sigh of relief, you search the castle, but she's nowhere to be found. So, I guess- No, that's the same ending that I already had. Okay. So, oops, I didn't mean to exit entirely. Got the day off thanks to the doctor. Oh, well, it's unfortunate that you're sick, but it's nice that you had the day off. <laughs> Hopefully you were able to spend it relaxing. Okay, so I don't think I can do anything else with the hero right now. So I think how this is probably going to work is I'm going to have to keep switching between the characters. Because you can see here, like, this one that's grayed out up top that's this underling so i probably have to play as the underling and that will like unlock something that lets me make a different choice or something different happens back pain stunning from sunday as somebody else who has uh definitely had issues with back pain i feel you oblivion i actually just got a massage today which i started getting massages because i was having back pain <laughs> and now i just do it monthly to try and help Alright, so let's play as the Maiden. Is the Maiden actually at the Demon's Castle? Uh, you're a Maiden. You live in a peaceful village next to a spooky Demon Overlord's Castle. You're told that you're fated to be captured by the Overlord one day because you're a beautiful young girl. Demon Overlords apparently love capturing those. You think of how you haven't heard of that actually happening to anyone. But maybe the Demons just haven't been given the opportunity? Who knows? You're in church. You pray to your god, asking why you've been born into this role of the Maiden. You respect the divine plan and all, but you're really just curious as to what the point of it is. You're impatient. You want to get captured? Uh, meeting a demon actually sounds pretty gosh darn exciting. Maybe you'd understand your role better if you were to just hurry up and get captured already. You leave a note and venture forth to find a demon, just to, you know, see what happens. Not long into your little adventure, a demon underling appears before you. It looks pretty scary. Do you shout for the hero to come save you, or introduce yourself? I'm pretty polite. I'll introduce myself. You tell the demon your name and explain that you're a maiden from the village. I'll trade you oblivion. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think you would want COVID over back pain. Although I guess it depends how bad the back pain is and how severe the case of COVID is. I also have back pain. Back pain gang, let's go. That's not something to be excited about, but <laughs> we can suffer together. Yay. Exciting. The demon suddenly jumps you and starts biting a lot. How painful. What the hell? I tried to be nice. This plan of yours was completely stupid, you think? Why couldn't you have been more patient? Why did you go looking for trouble? You aren't angry or anything, of course. This was all your fault for trusting a demon not to devour you on sight. This is your punishment for questioning fate, you guess. Bit by bit, you are swallowed by the demon until you are no more. Consumed Maiden End. Oh. Um, okay. So, that went well. That would explain why the hero never found her at the castle, because she just gets eaten uh, before she even gets to the castle. <laughs> okay. So this time, what if I shout for help? You yell, but a hero doesn't come. Oh, great. The demon suddenly jumps you and starts biting. A lot. How painful. 
This was stupid, you think? Why couldn't you have been more patient? Uh, okay. So that's going to be the same ending. I see what's going on here. No matter what, I can't get past that. So I'm going to have to play as the underling and not be aggressive. And then that will unlock a different path. Because I should be able to choose not to eat the maiden. Right? So let's play as underling. That was a very fast end, Jack, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're a demon underling in service of the Overlord. You aren't particularly strong, but not particularly weak either. That's what your friends tell you. Your job is to guard the castle and keep humans away. It's unbearably boring. Heroes rarely come all the way here to challenge the Overlord anyway. It's a lot of standing in one place, staring into nothing. You feel like you're going to go crazy if you don't get a break. You decide to ask the Overlord for a day off. She gives you an earful about responsibility and unquestioning obedience. You wait for her to finish her lecture before returning to your post. What does she know about anything? Who made her the boss of everyone? You complain about the Overlord to your friends. They agree that she is kind of a snob and totally deserves to be kicked off her throne. You only wanted to vent your frustrations, but the conversation somehow turned into an assassination plot. Oh wow, how the turntables. You should probably steer clear of this in a responsible direction. Let's overthrow her, or let's not. No, I think we shouldn't. You tell your friends you were totally not serious about this whole thing. You're actually cool with the status quo. After all, life must be pretty dang good if the only thing you have to complain about is that you live so comfortably that there's nothing to do. The others nod, but don't seem convinced. You say a coup d'etat would be more effort than it's worth. But you're still going to be a rebel and sneak out of the castle. Your friends praise your mischievous ways. The change of atmosphere excites you. You spend some time rolling around in the grass, wild and free. As you make your way along the path to the nearby human village, you encounter a maiden. All right, so this is what I was thinking. We're on the other end this time. Oh, I just realized it's tracking my cursor. We don't need that. That's just gonna get in the way. I'm gonna take that one. Goodbye, cursor. Okay. Um, she seems very frightened and screams for a hero to come save her. You consider your options. Gobble her up or tell her to quit yelling. Uh, let's do gobble her up. It's just gonna be the same ending, but I'll unlock the hungry trait, I guess. Maidens aren't the best meal, but you figure you should live up to your demon name and strike back against the humans. You start devouring the maiden without so much as a second thought and feel quite proud of that. Other humans would surely praise you with curses if they were around to see. Oh man, if only somebody could have been watching. Time to find an audience for your evil deeds. You wander into the nearby village. The people are screaming and running away, throwing rocks at you and whatnot. You think that's pretty rude of them. It is, isn't it? You haven't even done anything yet. Put on a show. <laughs> you attack the nearest human. He's old and weak and his bones crunch delightfully. Your audience's screams grow louder. Applause. You think, hey, this is actually pretty fun. I should have taken revenge like this a lot sooner. As you continue your bloodthirsty dance, striking the villagers down, you fail to notice a sword-wielding hero running toward you. He takes you out in one swift blow. You're just a demon underling after all. As you die, you think, that was totally worth it. The curtain closes. <laughs> uh, performer underling ends. Perform a massacre. Okay. Um, awesome. So, let's do that again. So, let's go with the hungry thing. So, we'll skip to that choice again. So, we're going to gobble her up again. Yep. This time, we're not going to put on a show. Change my mind and leave. The hero will probably chase me out and kill me, but let's just see. You figure if people are this upset at just the sight of you, they won't fully appreciate any terrible acts that you commit. <laughs> also, they might fight back. That probably wouldn't end well. You're just an underling after all. This little day out has been adequately refreshing. You return to the castle thinking you'll take a nap. You don't get to sleep long. Your friends wake you up. Rude. One of them is stepping on you pretty hard. You ask them what their deal is. They say they're planning a whole revolution. They're going to get rid of the current overlord and put a new ruler in place. They want to hear if you're in or out. And being a pretty lazy underling, you of course reply with, that sounds like a lot of trouble. How about we just skip it instead? 
Your friends question your loyalty to their cause. Uh, this has a skull next to it, so I'm probably going to get killed. Let's do it! She's actually not so bad, guys. Your friends seem pretty disappointed. They apologize to you. But before you can ask what they're sorry about, one of them suddenly seizes you. Someone who's still loyal to the Overlord really has no place in our castle. You understand, right? Their claws tighten around your neck. You don't bother to struggle. You're outnumbered. You already know how things like this end. This is a pretty messed up thing to do to a friend, you tell them. It really is, isn't it? You guys wouldn't do that to me, right? Right? They slit your throat in response. Oh, that escalated. Faithful underling end. Okay. Um... So... What if we're hungry and disloyal? Yeah. So we'll skip. Uh, we're not going to overthrow her at the start, okay? We'll join them later on, because I want to do that other branch at the end. Um, so we are going to gobble her. We're going to change our mind and leave. Okay, so this time we're going to join them. We're going to kill the Overlord. You tell them you were just joking and clarify that you're totally in it to win it. They say you are always terrible with jokes. Whether or not you actually feel like killing the Overlord, you know how bad it would be to end up on the wrong side of things. And if this assassination deal doesn't pan out, you can always pretend you were innocent all along. But beneath your shield of faux confidence... Faux confidence? Faux confidence? I don't know, I think it's faux. Maybe it's faux. This came up in the Persona stream, and I didn't know how to pronounce it. I think it's faux. Uh, you worry about what you're getting yourself dragged into. You follow your friends outside the castle to talk more about the plan. You're curious if they have any idea how they want to go about this. They figured they'd just lock her in a room and set it on fire. What a stupid plan. That could go wrong in so many ways. You realize your friends are just a bunch of directionless thugs, useless without someone's guidance. Your guidance. There'd probably be casualties if you fought her head on. And while showy deaths make a revolution a heck of a lot more fun, it's probably the wrong way to go. Your friends agree and suggest that you play the assassin. You really didn't want it to come down to this. Foe? Okay. But you can't back down now. You'll have to be the one to assassinate the Overlord. Besides, no one has any better ideas. You sneak into the Overlord's room. She's taking a nap like usual. This is almost too easy. You silently approach your master. She looks so peaceful. Time to die or chicken out? Let's do it. Time to die. You figure the cleanest way to do this would be to dig your claws into her throat, so you do just that. She wakes, but not in time to stop you. You watch as she chokes on her blood, cursing you, before finally expiring. That felt terrible. You remind yourself it was either her or you, and you weren't about to let yourself be killed by anyone. You leave the room to find your friends waiting just outside. They look pleased. Only now do you realize they must have used plan to use you like this from the beginning. You're the new ruler of this castle. Your subjects bow before you. You live in fear that they'll one day betray you as you had betrayed your overlord. Lore underling ending B. Oh, so is that not a bad end? Because I didn't die. Let's see. Uh, nope, evidently that's still a bad end. Even though I didn't die. I guess because the Overlord died? I Oh, so, okay. I guess the only good end is going to be if all four characters survive. That's my guess. And if my assumption is correct, now that I can select these options for Underling, if I don't select Hungry, I bet it won't eat the Maiden, which means the hero might find the Maiden if I go back and play as the hero. But before I do that, I want to keep doing the other choices for Underling. Alright, so we're going to make the same choices again. We're not going to overthrow. I'm going to gobble her up. We're going to escape. I'm going to agree to kill the Overlord. Now this time I'm going to chicken out. And she's probably going to kill me. You don't want to kill her. You can't go through with it. You turn to leave the room, but you find your friends blocking the exit. In a panicked whisper, you ask them to let you out. This seems to have been their way of testing your loyalty. 
you tell them this is pretty fucked up, and ask again to be let out. The overlord stirs in her bed while your head is turned. The demon shut the door. You scramble into the overlord's closet to hide before she wakes up and sees you. There's nothing you could possibly say to explain this and survive. You're trembling. You can't believe those assholes would bully you like this. You feel like crying. Light flickers at your feet. It doesn't take you long to realize that they've set the room on fire. You hear the overlord trying to get the door open to no avail. You're both trapped. Too afraid to move, you resign yourself to your fate. You and the overlord burn together. Okay. So... She didn't wake up and kill me like I thought. So we got another ending with... So where does that go on the chart? So that's... Oh, so those are equal points. I see. Ah, okay, yep. So you can see there, like, okay. Like, this path will light up if you set the hero to be dutiful, and then you go through that route. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, yep. So if I play as the underling, I devour the maiden, and then if I do the massacre, I die. If I don't do the massacre and leave, then I come back to the castle. But it could branch there if the hero is set to be dutiful. So if I go back, and I set the hero as dutiful, and then I play as underling, let's see if that changes anything. All right, so we're not going to overthrow her. I'm going to gobble her up. I'm going to leave. All right, so now is this different? Does the hero come after me? Let's see. After a few hours of sleep, you're rudely awakened by the sounds of battle. Ah, so the hero has come to the castle. You emerge from your room to find that a hero has slaughtered many of your friends and work associates. What a jerk. Do you avenge your fallen comrades or save yourself? We'll avenge our comrades, even though they just betrayed me. Who does this guy think he is, coming in here and killing everyone like some maniac? What did we ever do to him? I know I gobbled up the maiden, but that's not relevant. You lunge at him while he's busy driving his sword into the guard who sometimes brought you food whenever they noticed you were feeling kind of down. What a friend. You liked that guard. You wish with all your demon heart for this hero to suffer for his deeds. You bite into him, tearing flesh from bone. It tastes like iron. The hero struggles. You feel his sword go through you, but there's no pain, only retribution. More of your comrades pile onto him as your consciousness fades. The hero is overtaken. Your army has won. You've earned your rest. Victorious underling. Ah, okay. So I didn't die like I thought. I killed the hero. Okay, so let's do the same thing. But this time, I am going to chicken out of killing the hero. So we're not going to overthrow. We will gobble up the maiden. We're going to leave. Hero attacks. I'm going to save myself. You look around at the lifeless forms of those you've known as far back as you can remember. You feel glad to not be in their shoes. You also feel guilty to be thinking that as you flee the castle, until you remember your role, not as an underling, but as a demon. This kind of thing is expected of you. Maybe you'll start a new life, far away from any humans or demons, where you'll live peacefully, alone in some deep dark forest somewhere. Deserter underling ending. Okay. <laughs> um, the underling is giving me a ton of endings. I can get so many without doing the other stuff. Alright, so all of these grayed out ones, you're going to have to keep switching back and forth. So on this route... So I've never actually made this choice in the first place. And I've never been nice to the maiden. I've always eaten her. Okay. So I think we have to make a different choice earlier on this time. Man, we can do a ton of underling stuff. So now is that filling in the other charts? Yeah, so now that I've met... Yeah, okay. So if the underling is hungry and eats the maiden, she dies. If the underling is nice, she'll get brought back to the castle, and she'll meet the overlord, and then, oh, that branches out a ton of stuff. Okay. 
And then the hero... Okay. So let's keep going with Underling, and then we'll switch back uh, once we've exhausted the options with them. Um, try to reach the true endings. Oh, maybe all of them have their own good ending? The one that's on the far right, that must be the good ending for everyone. Alright, so we're gonna go back to Underling. What do I want the hero to be? Um... Alright, I'm not gonna set anything for the hero for the time being. So we're gonna skip. Uh, we are not going to overthrow the king. So this time, instead of gobbling her up, we're gonna just tell her to stop yelling. When the maiden realizes you're not gonna hurt her, she regains her composure. Oh, they look like friends now. Now she started talking to you like you're friends or something. You don't understand humans at all. You speak the same language, of course, which has always confused you. Because why is there conveniently only one language in the world? That would be convenient. If humans and demons had independent societies, wouldn't it make sense for them to each have their own language? Ah, maybe this is lore. Maybe the demon king is actually a human. How about that? Or a hybrid. Also some for the lore to do. Yeah, I think once I exhaust the underling, then I'm going to do the lord. And then I'll loop back to the start with the hero. The maiden is going on and on about some kind of destiny that she's trying to fulfill. The bottom line from what you gather is that she wants you to take her to the overlord. Sounds like it could be interesting. Besides, you don't have anything better to do. Satisfied with your day out, you take the maiden back to the castle and present her to the overlord. The overlord... Uh, are we back? It looks like I got uh, disconnected for a second, which is interesting. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> um, it looks okay. Uh, oh, we back. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, stream did die for a second. Nope. Nope. Something on my end. I saw a little flash up pop up in a... Uh... OBS that said disconnected. Don't know what that was all about, but it seems like we're good. <laughs> um, thought it was my internet, but I got that fiber. True. Your internet's the best out of everybody now. Alright, well, good that we're back. I don't think you guys missed anything. I stopped as soon as I noticed. You mentioned how you can't believe that you and your friends even considered overthrowing her. She gives you a look and you say, that was a joke, of course. She smiles and dismisses you. You decide it's time for a nap. You don't get to sleep long because your friends wake you up, rude. Oh, so we're back to this, okay. So I assume nothing is gonna change here. Yeah, okay. So... That didn't actually change anything. It just loops you back, which makes sense, because you can see at the beginning the loop comes back around. Um, okay. So... I'm assuming then that's probably the end of Underling. If I do Underling, and then at the very start, I decide to overthrow her, it's probably just going to loop back to the same stuff as before. Uh, you're sick of this overlord holding you and your friends back. You agree that it's time for a change of management. Your friends suggest maybe you should be the new overlord. You like the sound of that. You announce your first act of rebellion is to take that day off like you wanted. Your friends aren't impressed. You assure them you'll talk more about the assassination thing when you get back, which satisfies them. Okay, yeah, and then it just loops around. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna do something to get myself killed. Okay, so I think we've exhausted everything with the underling. So now, let's go with the overlord. And then, 
these charts should really start to fill in. Everybody should light up. Yeah, like this is blacked out from the Overlord here. Not that it matters because it still loops around. Um, anyway. We are going to go with Overlord. I was peacefully enjoying the wonderful readings of Leo when his connection decided to mess with me. I know. Ratty connection. How could it do this to us? We're just trying to chill. Have some good times. Oh man, I just got the hiccups out of nowhere. It'd be hard to read with hiccups. But we press on. Alright. I am the Overlord. Now that is a smug face. I do appreciate some good smug. You are the Overlord. You live in a castle surrounded by your demon servants. It's a pretty cushy life, you think. Except for those pesky humans who keep killing members of your army. Those bitches. There's even a role called Hero, whose whole purpose in life is just to dethrone you. What a jerk. What's their deal anyway? You've actively avoided pissing off the humans in the hopes that they'll leave you and your army alone, but they never do. You're still new to the whole Overlord thing if you're being quite honest with yourself. You don't really understand the politics of it. Smug Lord? <laughs> yes, the Smug Lord. But you remind yourself everyone's just doing their best to fulfill their roles. You won't let them bait you into being the evil overlord that they expect. You think you're pretty cool and mature to hold yourself to the higher standard like that. I know, I am pretty, uh, highbrow, aren't I? One of your underlings walks into your room, totally interrupting your thoughts about how awesome you are. They're saying something about how boring it is to stand in one place guarding the castle all the time, especially since nobody ever comes here anyway. You see their point, but the way they're whining about it kind of bothers you. What do you do with this underling? Tell them to get back to work or grant them the day off. Let's give them the day off. I'm nice. You tell them to take a break from the stifling castle atmosphere and refresh their dark soul. A day off should be fine every once in a while. I like the thumbs up and like the heh. <laughs> Very firmly remind yourself that you're not a fish. My sister swears by that for curing hiccups. That you're a fish. That's, I've never heard that one. <laughs> I've heard the, like, hold your breath one, uh, but I have not heard of the convince yourself you're a fish. I wonder how many different, like, remedies for hiccups there are around the world. Different cultures, different families, different countries. They thank you and happily scurry off to do who knows what. You have nothing better to do today, so you decide to nap for a little while. Being the overlord sure is great. You awake to a knock on your door. The underling from earlier brought back some company. It's a maiden from the nearby village. She says her role is to be captured by you. The maiden then goes on to say that she's been getting very impatient thinking about her impending capture, so she's come here to speed things along. You appreciate her honesty, but regret to inform her that you never had any plans to capture any humans. She seems very disappointed by this. Perhaps I'm not performing my role well enough. How can I become more maiden-like? You don't really understand the question. You think this world puts way too much focus on destiny and junk. Just go home and stop worrying about it, you tell her. The maiden seems to be having a hard time wrapping her head around this. She insists that she stay and talk to you more. You feel warm inside as she looks into your eyes. This is the first time that a human has looked at you without contempt. You wonder what to say. Tell her she'd better go home or let her stay for a while. Uh, alright, let's let her stay for a while. You can't bring yourself to send this maiden away, she just got here. Look at that happy face. Oh my goodness. Who would have thought the demon overlord would be so cute? All right. You enjoy a nice long chat with her, sharing stories about your kind. She expresses her surprise that demons are not at all what she expected them to be. You're glad that she seems to have an open mind about these kinds of things. You also bring up how you always instruct your army to avoid humans, as not to agitate them and get heroes sent out after you. 
That explains why the people of my village have been left unharmed. It's because of your orders, isn't it? We're very grateful. You're surprised to hear her thank you. You always thought of humans to be violent and unreasonable. That's why your servants are always getting killed despite your efforts to leave them alone. But this maiden is different. You joke that maybe you've been lying to her this whole time and that you were actually super evil all along. Look at the smug! Such a good heh face. The maiden laughs at that, saying she wouldn't mind being held captive here. The people in her village are a little exhausting at times, she says. You can't tell if she's into you or not. What? <laughs> we have a romance arc? Got something to do with shutting off an old holdover instinct from the common ancestor species or maybe a placebo? Huh. Oh, that you're not a fish. You're interrupted by another human in your doorway. This time, it's the hero. He was apparently searching for the maiden, who was rumored to have been captured by your kind. Captured? Not at all. I only wanted to meet with the overlord. Didn't anyone read the note that I left behind? After everything is explained, the hero expresses his relief that this whole misunderstanding hadn't led to any horrible consequences. The maiden apologizes for causing trouble, and the hero asks her to return to the village with him. Confusing feelings well up inside your heart. You're surprised you had one of those to begin with. You don't want the hero to take this maiden away from you. Do you keep her here and act possessive or let them go? Let's go for the nice route, we'll let them go. You're certain that she'll return to spend more time with you. You just have to trust in that, you decide. With the hero and maiden gone, you plop down into the comfort of your luxurious overlord bed. Your room feels so empty now. Is this loneliness? You hope your new friend will be back soon. You close your eyes for a while. Until your door slams shut. Before you know it, everything around you is being engulfed by flames. What's going on? You try to escape, but something's blocking the door. You're having trouble forcing it open. What is this? Someone didn't want you getting out. Are you being usurped? They have zero foresight. What castle will they rule from if this one burns? You don't want to believe that your underlings have betrayed you, but this is no accident, those ungrateful bastards. You choke on the thick black smoke from the fire. You still can't believe you're being done in by a bunch of cowards. You'll see them in hell. Wow. So after me being nice to everybody, I just get burned to death. So I guess this overthrow plot is going to happen no matter what. Oh, okay. So the good ending must revolve around keeping the, the overlord alive from the... I see. Okay. The maiden is the root cause of all of this? She does kind of set things into motion, huh? So let's see how that path was. So that has the tyrant, antisocial, and possessive traits. So we went... Uh, I let the Overlord have the day off. Overlord tells the Maiden to go back home, which I did. Then I wake up, and I'm being burned. Ungrateful punks, yeah. <laughs> Honestly. So I guess if I tell the Underling... Okay, so if I... Oh, okay, so it tells you. So if I want to get to this ending... Oh, I, you can't see because I turned my thing off. The question mark in the middle bottom. Like, in between all three of... Or under all three of these. I have to set the underling to be hungry. And I have to set the hero to be dutiful. And I have to be a tyrant and tell the underling to get back to work. Then it will go to this route. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to set the underling to hungry, the hero to dutiful, and we're going to be a tyrant. So she's never going to meet the maiden because of that. All right, so I tell him to get back to work. You give them a lecture about responsibility and unquestioning obedience. Your servants ought to do what they're told, whether they like it or not. They look really unhappy with you, but you're sure they'll thank you for this later. Venturing too far from the castle tends to spell death. You dismiss the underling and lie down in your nice and comfy overlord bed. All that lecturing made you want to take a nap. Oh, I get it. So this is going to end with me getting killed by the hero. You fall asleep pretty quick, just another one of your amazing talents as the overlord. 
You awake to a huge commotion outside. A hero has shown up and started totally murdering your soldiers. What the hell, guy? You rush out into the battlefield to confront this jerkwad. You curse at him and very rudely inquire his reasons for doing all of this. The hero yells at you, demanding you return the maiden that you're holding captive. You don't know what he's talking about, but you can't forgive his actions. You do battle with the hero, but he's grown strong from cutting down your army. You're unable to defeat him. With decisive swings, he stabs and cuts you to pieces. You fall. You have failed your subjects. You spit curses weakly. You wish you had been stronger. Maybe you were never suited to be the overlord in the first place. The truth was, you were never that much more powerful than the demons who served you. It was the title, the control that gave you strength. These are your thoughts as you're swallowed by darkness. Conquered overlord, lose to the hero. Okay. So now if we look back at that, that whole bottom route, okay. So this time, it doesn't matter what the hero is. Oh, but there is a hero thing there. Now we've seen her POV of getting killed by the hero. Yeah, exactly. So I guess that probably filled in, yeah. Look at all these, uh, we've done really well on filling in the bottom half, not so much the top half. We're 100%ing this in one stream, that's the goal of Oblivion, yep. <laughs> I'm trying to get every single ending. It should only take two to three hours, it's not a long and the hero doesn't matter. Oh, did it die again? It looks okay on my end right now. Must have died while I was looking away. Well, it's good that it's briefly at least. <laughs> Interesting. Um, all right, well, I don't know why it's doing that, but apologies. Okay, so I think setting the underling to be hungry and disloyal. It's now it's going to be my POV of getting killed by the underling. Call your provider like a Karen and tell them to fix their shit. True. Granted, I guess I should be luck or grateful in that. First of all, I stream on Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't have a wired connection. Uh, and this is the first time in. I believe this is my, like, 194th or 195th stream. That's the first time it's ever done that. Which is pretty crazy. You fiend. I am quite the fiend, aren't I? But, uh, our box, like, internet box, is on a different floor from me. And I don't particularly want to have to wire, like, a 60-foot cable through two floors to get to me, so <laughs> Wi-Fi it is. Um, Alright, so we're gonna go back to this. I'm gonna beat the tyrant, tell him to get back to work. Alright, here we go. You're awakened by one of your underlings. They've brought you a hero who inquires about a missing maiden. You tell him you don't know anything. Humans never really visit this place. Uh, he believes you and goes home. To your surprise, you figured he might try to fight you, but you're glad to get back to your nap instead. Until you woke up to something completely unexpected. One of your underlings is tearing your throat out. You try to struggle, but you can tell you're already mortally wounded. What have you done to deserve this kind of ending? You curse at them, choking on your own blood. You die wondering if you could have done anything to prevent this. Get assassinated ending. Okay. So what if I don't make him disloyal? Oh, so he's going to be disloyal no matter what. So then there's another thing with the hero that I haven't unlocked. And that's what gets me to this ending. Okay. So then over here, if I set the hero as diplomatic, but I'm possessive, that will unlock a new ending. Um... 
who you live with <laughs> uh family still live at home it was a situation where i graduated college the summer before covid so i was like oh i'm gonna live at home for a year or two and save up money and then i'll move out uh after that and then you know seven months after i graduate eight months whatever it is uh COVID starts and i'm like well obviously i'm not moving out during covid <laughs> i'm just gonna stay at home uh and then COVID was a couple years and i was not good about saving money because i got into pokemon cards and collecting things so i didn't save money like i wanted to i just spent money so now i'm saving money again but i'm still living at home so i basically have reset to as if i just graduated college and now i'm saving money again uh because i was not smart with it the COVID years go figure that's a uh, early 20s guy with uh, a job and next to no expenses would be stupid with his money i want to beat my old self up crazy uh but i like living at home so it works out also i live pretty close to where i work anyway so that's also super convenient could have been tea yeah <laughs> could have been tea but alas yeah no tea to be found the only girl i have is my wife who's uh reminds me i should go watch your debut stream since i don't know anything about you yeah there you go um you could i do think my debut stream is kind of cringe because it was my first time ever streaming but it does have a list of my likes and dislikes and stuff and um you know it's like the quick synopsis of who leo lovelace is likes dislikes favorite vtubers favorite anime manga music um all that type of stuff Let's get an ending where Leo gets the girl. Yeah, let's go. Um, future Leo is also streaming, so it's creating shenanigans. True. I lived at home until my mom moved out. True, that worked out for you, Oblivion. I <laughs> uh, don't understand the concept of moving out unless there's problems. Yeah, I think that's also like, it's definitely cultural. I think, well, really it... It seems like the U.S., or maybe North America in general, is, like, really the only place that's kind of normalized moving out as soon as you can. And pretty much everywhere in, like, Asia and whatnot is, like, very, you know, keen on... Well, I guess I can't really speak because I don't know a whole lot, but... Definitely in the U.S., it's just the norm to move out pretty much as soon as you can. Compared to other cultures and countries where I know it's the norm to live at home for an extended period of time, and then you might move out for a little bit, but then it's also normal for your parents to move in with you. And it just kind of flips. Uh, whereas, again, that is not the norm in the U.S., like, generally speaking. You move out as early as you can you live on your own your parents live on their own and then when your parents get older usually they just stay at their house perpetually or they move into like a nursing home like it's not common for parents to move back in with the kids which it, yeah it's definitely like a cultural thing i guess save that money bro that's the goal saudi also welcome to the stream moving out of home in this market yeah that's the other thing wasabi <laughs> So I did look at moving out, uh, I guess, like, mid-late pandemic, when things were starting to calm down. Because I had enough money saved that I felt like, yeah, I probably could move out. But then I was looking at, like, apartment prices, and I was talking with one of my friends about moving in together, and it was just high enough that I felt like it was slightly out of my budget still. Uh, and then things got worse for the housing market, so... That also doesn't really <laughs> make me want to move out. So, yeah, I'm pretty much just going to keep living at home and saving money until I either feel really confident in my savings or the market really dies down. 
I mean, the ultimate goal, I think the best move possible, which is what I initially started to think about doing when I was fresh out of college, is live at home as long as you can, save up as much money as you can, and skip buying an apartment. Skip getting an apartment. Just go directly to buying a house or a condo. If you can be diligent enough to save for all of that, that is 100% the best move. Because housing, like, when it comes to housing, a house or a condo is an investment. You own it. And you're paying a mortgage. But when you sell it, you should get your money back. And maybe more. If, you know, the market is going up and you keep it, you know, depending on your location and all of that. Whereas when you have an apartment, you just lose the money. That's it. You give your money to the landlord. You don't get anything back when you move out, other than your deposit, I guess, maybe. Or your security, whatever it is. That's it. You just lose the money. And when you're paying rent every month, it makes it way harder to save up for things like a house or other big expenses. So, I don't know. I feel like apartments are a scam. I get it. I know why they're necessary. But if I could avoid an apartment and just go straight to a house, I will definitely do that. But, again, with the market being what it is, that's going to take forever. Even with me being better about saving now. So, what can you do? But, like I said, I'm totally cool living at home. I like living at home. I get along well with my family. It's close to work. So, it works out. Not worth it unless you're buying. I agree, Saudi. I agree. Um, what's the debut stream? Yeah, <laughs> Mr. I'm just going to start streaming straight up with no debut. Which is also an option. I mean, debuts really just mostly make sense for, like, agency VTubers. Like, introduce yourself to a big audience right from the start. If you're an indie, I feel like you do it if you want, just because it's typical for VTubers. But you really don't need to. Like, if you are an indie VTuber, or an indie streamer, and you do a debut stream, who's gonna come? Nobody knows you. So, if you are really lucky, with maybe a social media post on Twitter or Reddit popping off and people see it and they come like that works. Cool. You know, that's great. Otherwise, it's just going to be like your friends and family. Like they're the only people who are going to know who you are. You're going to have like no subscribers when you start or followers. So I did it just because it, it's typical of VTubers and it was my first ever stream. I was like, I'm going to ease myself into it with like I made a PowerPoint. It's an hour talking about it. It is what it is. But I totally get why people are saying there's a lot of talk about it, like about how it just doesn't really make sense. But I think if you want to do it, do it. But you don't have to. It's totally fine to just start streaming, get experience, then build up an audience doing that. And then you could do an actual debut later on. Oh, th that's like exactly what you just said, Mooney, too. Yeah, exactly. Jump right in, build up the audience and then do the actual debut when people actually know you and they want to watch it. Completely agree. Um, I'm Asian. Oh, yeah, that would explain it then, Blanken. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely pretty common with uh, what I've heard of, like, Japan, at least. And I think Zero had said it was pretty similar for him, too out in Thailand, so I don't know if that's just the norm for most Asian countries or if it's like a subsection of Asian countries that's normal, but it's definitely a thing in some of them. Um, Alright, so what was I going to do for a different route here? Uh, Alright, so like these I can't do because I'm missing events. So I guess I could do this one. I have everything I need. So I need to... I'm going to give the underling the day off. Let the maiden stay in chat. The hero will be diplomatic. I'm going to let them go, but the underling has to be disloyal. 
All right, so diplomatic hero and disloyal underling. So it's just going to be me getting killed again. Uh, so I'm going to give him the day off. I'm going to let her stay. And then, oh shit, what was I going to do here? Oh, so if I keep her here, I get killed. I don't think I've done that. So I'm just going to do that. The maiden came here to be captured by you, didn't she? You'll grant her wish. You tell the hero you won't let him take her home. The maiden assures you she'll be back, but you don't budge. The hero is cautious now. If you won't let her go, maybe you demons are evil after all. And if you are, I'll be forced to vanquish you. You have no choice. You destroy the hero before he can steal your maiden away. She's frightened. You don't understand why. Didn't she say she prefers this place to her village? Now she doesn't have to leave. You take a step toward the maiden and she backs herself into a corner. You don't understand. Something sharp pierces your back. The hero? No, he's already... It's one of your underlings. The maiden screams. Your servant tackles you, tearing you apart with their claws. You struggle to retaliate. They've done too much damage. You can barely move now. Your blood is everywhere. You can't believe this has happened to you. Why has this happened to you? You've been slain by your own underling. So this is a variant of the Betrayed Overlord end. Okay. So I think that wasn't the path that I intended to go down. Yeah, that was something else. So that wasn't... Okay, so... This time, instead of being possessive... Oh, why didn't that unmark that ending? Because that's what I just did, right? I was possessive, and then... Yeah, this didn't light up like it should have. That's interesting. Alright, so this time, I am not going to be possessive. And then I'm going to get killed by the underling again! <laughs> been so long, bro. Hello, Strawberry! Welcome to the stream! Yeah, it's been a while. Hope you've been good. Alright, so we're gonna skip. Uh, I'm gonna give them the day off. I'm gonna let the maiden stay. I'm gonna let them go. Alright, so now this should be different. Uh, you plop into your bed. Your room feels empty. You hope your new friend will be back soon. You close your eyes for a while. You've almost fallen asleep when the maiden and hero burst into your room, frantically trying to communicate something to you. You're told that a group of demons is plotting to assassinate you. You're not surprised. How nice of the humans to care, though. One of your underlings barges in next, shouting that the humans are liars. They're followed by another group of demons, crying that everything was the first underling's plan. Everyone is shouting over each other now, and it's very annoying. You yell at all of them to shut their traps. You have no doubt that your servants would let their ambition cloud their judgment and lead them to try to take your throne. Regardless of who led this conspiracy, I have no choice but to punish everyone to keep you all in your place, crushed beneath my heel. Saying that made you feel very Overlord-like. You aren't sure if you have the strength to back it up, though. Lately, all you do is sleep. The group of demons start muttering something about going back to Plan A, and suddenly slam your door shut. Oh, they're gonna burn me. You, the Maiden, the Hero, and one of your underlings are trapped inside. Oh, this is all four of the player characters now. In an instant, the whole room is in flames. The underling pounds on the door, cursing at their friends for betraying them. The hero pounds on the door as well, vowing to slay the cowardly demons on the other side. So this is how you'll die. Burned alive in your own room by those you thought you could trust. You should have expected this from a bunch of idiot demons, though. You notice the maiden crying. Why does she have to die over something that has nothing to do with her? Perhaps she was cursed from the moment that she spoke to you. You wonder if they're cursed as well, or if you're cursed as well. You're so filled with anger and frustration that you don't even notice that you've grabbed the underling those traitors blamed everything on. They cry for mercy, saying that they were dragged into this plot knowing they would be killed if they took your side. They cry they didn't want to kill you. You almost feel sorry for them. Take retribution or forgive them. I'm at 101 now. Might be best to just lay down, have like a cold compress and try to sleep early or something. Um, all right. I am gonna try forgiving them in the hopes that 
If I keep them alive, somehow we'll make it out of this. You release the underling. Killing them wouldn't make you feel any better. Besides, they've already gotten their punishment. You'll all burn together. Oh, never mind. Okay, so it doesn't change anything. I burn no matter what. The overlord's true... The true end for the overlord is burn to death with everybody? What? Before you're taken back to reset the story once again, you pause for a moment. True end, you say to yourself? What was the point of all my effort if the true ending is this terrible? That's what I'm saying. You must have forgotten where you were. This is bad end theater. Is the pain setting in? Oh, but you should have been well aware of what, you've, of what you'd be shown when you entered this place. It's a problem I've seen quite often. At some point, you grow attached to my little cast. You start to relate to their flaws, their plights. You started wishing for their happiness. But you aren't going to find that in my theater. My lovingly crafted labyrinth of suffering. Anyway, I hope you'll pardon the interruption. You're making great progress. The choice to continue on to the next ending is always yours. I'll leave you to it, dear guest. Alright, so that was all the way at the far right. Yep, okay, so that is the true end. So, then I just need to make the other choice here to kill the demon instead. Uh, so I'll go back and do that. So I need Diplomatic Hero and Disloyal Demon. Oh, I unlocked another trait because of that. Nice, nice. Alright, so let's make the choices again. Give them the day off. Let them stay. Let them go. They rush in, and now I kill them. You pierce their chest with your claws. They scream. The hero backs away. He's wise not to interfere. They've stopped moving, but you keep digging and twisting your claws into them. It doesn't make you feel any better. The underling's corpse burns along with you and the two humans. The end. Spiteful overlord ending. Okay. We've gotten uh, almost 15 out of 41 endings, ranking good progress. 6 out of 10 of the overlord. Maiden and hero, we barely have any. Alright, so... This time... So why didn't it unlock this one? I could have sworn I did it. You die no matter what. That's basically the point of the game. Uh... <laughs> Given that it is bad end theater, almost every single choice is going to end in the characters dying. In some way. The real question is, if we unlock all of the endings, do we get a secret good ending? Yeah, see? Don't give up. Surely there's a good ending somewhere. Maybe if we unlock all 41 endings first. Okay. So, let's set... The hero to be diplomatic. Doesn't matter what I set anyone else. Alright, so I just want to set the hero as diplomatic. And... That should bring me to this, but I'm pretty sure I got it. So I need to give the underling the day off, let the maiden stay in chat, and then be possessive. Alright, give them the day off, let them stay in chat, be possessive. So I've already gotten this ending, though. Oh, it's slightly changed, okay. She wanted to stay here with you. The hero was trying to get in the way of that. You had to kill him. You'll be sure to keep this maiden very safe from now on. Selfish Overlord ending, okay. So that should have unlocked the one that I was looking at before. Yeah, this one. Okay. So now the only other choice that I haven't made to get another new ending before I have to jump back to the hero is letting the underling have the day off, let the maiden stay in chat, but the hero has to be dutiful instead. No best ending? I don't know. Hopefully uh, we have a good ending at some point. Alright, so give them the day off. Let the maiden stay in chat. Alright, so now... The hero's probably gonna barge in and kill me. Uh, we've seen this. That explains why the people of my village have been left unharmed. Oh, that was lit up because of the maiden. Okay. Alright, so we've done... Alright, this is where it differs. 
You notice the sounds of battle have started ringing through your castle halls. The maiden is getting nervous, but you reassure her it's only your underling's roughhousing. No big deal. You know it's probably a hero, but you don't want to upset the maiden by telling her that. Your army will take care of it. It isn't long before the hero bursts into your room. But he shouldn't have made it here. Why didn't they stop him? The hero just stands there unsure of himself. He's covered in demon blood. As the maiden speaks to him trying to explain the situation, you move past the hero and out the door. You're not thinking clearly. Seeing your servant's bodies and pieces all strewn about your castle has really taken it out on you. That hero did this? There's so much blood. Why? Why did he come for the maiden? Did he think that she needed rescuing? There was no one for this hero to save here. There was never any harm meant to anyone. You were just talking to her. Why has it turned out like this? The hero starts babbling insincere apologies and excuses, realizing his wrongdoing. But you are far beyond hearing that kind of bullshit. You have had it with these humans always murdering your servants for no reason. You can no longer hold yourself back and you lash out at the hero. When you regain control, there's nothing left of the hero. The maiden has fled in terror. You are alone. Wrathful Overlord ending. Okay, so I think that's everything that I could do with the Overlord. Yeah, that went up here. So the only other route that I can go down to get the other two endings involves something with the hero that I haven't unlocked yet. So I would have to go back to the hero. It looks like I have unlocked this new underling route, though. Oh, so you need, like, multiple... Okay. So... I need to... I'm gonna set the maiden as polite, and the hero as diplomatic. And then that should go up to the top. Alright. Oh, and the overlord also has to be possessive. Okay, so maiden polite, hero diplomatic, overlord possessive. Diplomatic, polite, possessive. And I have to... So I'm going to spare the maiden, but I have to join the plot to dethrone the overlord. The bow or the overlord is just Bowser. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a smug demon version of Bowser, sure. Alright, so... She's surprisingly cool with it? Nice! You set out on your adventures outside the castle. Uh, so we meet the maiden. You consider your options. We're gonna hear her out. You're in a good mood. Humans don't usually talk to you, so this is kind of exciting. You hadn't guessed it would even be possible to understand each other before now. So we keep going. And we bring her back. Uh, the Overlord and the Demon seem to be getting along fine, so you decide it's time for a nap. So now I have to get involved in the plot. Um, Alright, and then it will differ. Alright. Uh, whether or not you actually feel like killing the Overlord, you know how bad it would be to end up on the wrong side of things. And if the assassination deal doesn't pan out, you can always pretend you were innocent all along. But beneath your shield of faux confidence, you worry about what you're getting yourself dragged into. You follow your friends outside the castle to talk about the plan. Um, so we've seen this. Um, Alright, so this is where it differs. You sneak up to the Overlord's room, but there's a couple of humans in there. You watch the scene unfold. You aren't sure why, but the Overlord suddenly cuts down the hero. She approaches the maiden you brought to her earlier. While the Overlord is distracted, you figure this is as good a chance as any. You launch a sneak attack, getting her right in the back. She flinches, giving you enough advantage to take her down. You rip the Overlord apart until she stops moving. That was messier than you would have liked. The maiden mutters something from the corner. Thank you for saving me. It wasn't your intention, but it sounds like you did something heroic. You tell the maiden to go home. This place is dangerous. She follows your advice and leaves the castle. Your castle. You are the new overlord. The heroic? Okay. So that was the top one, right? Yep, that went up to the top.
So now again, it looks like I can't get to this point because I haven't unlocked the other things. So... Now I have to go back again. Now I should be able to get to like this because I have all of the prerequisite requirements. I can get to these endings. So I barely have any endings there. These I have to do something with the maiden still. This one I can get to one. I like games like this and seeing the different POVs. Yeah, it's interesting. Ah oh, man, I still need to play freaking 999 at some point. That and Somnium Files 2. All right, um, so we'll go back to the Maiden. Actually, let's go back to Hero. It's been a while since we've been him. So let's get up to this ending. So I need to be dutiful, dutiful. That will go down here. All right, so I just need to be dutiful, essentially. And then I guess I'm going to see a scene of me getting killed by the Overlord. So nothing else matters. It doesn't look like anything else mattered. Let me double check. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Alright. So we're going to be dutiful, slaughter the first batch, dutiful again, slaughter the second batch. Alright, so now it's different. You find the Maiden being held captive by the Overlord, just as you suspected. But for some reason, you can't sense anything sinister happening. You all look at each other in surprise and confusion. This is no time to hesitate. Destroy the Overlord or ask the Maiden what's going on? Uh, I think I need to ask to get the ending I wanted to do. She explains that she came here on her own and was never in any danger. She hesitantly asks why you're covered in blood. You don't know how to respond. The Overlord moves past you and out the door to see her army in lifeless, bloody piles. She's wailing. It's horrible. This is your chance, hero. Stab the Overlord while you can, or this is just a mis- It's just a misunderstanding, man. You hope she'll let this whole thing slide if you could just explain yourself. You really try, but the Overlord is inconsolable. She tears you apart, and the Maiden watches in silence. As you die, you can't help but think you probably deserve this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alright, so we'll reset. Uh, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except this time we're gonna attack the Overlord at the end. We'll skip. Be dutiful. Dutiful. Ask the Maiden what's going on, and now we're going to attack the Overlord. You lunge forward, driving your blade through the evil Overlord. She screams, then falls silent. The Overlord has been slain. You smile, offering the hand to your maiden, or offering the maiden your hand. This scene is just right out of Gundam. If anybody has watched uh, the newest Gundam, which for Mercury, uh, she takes it after slight hesitation. She must be surprised at how strong you are. You escort the maiden home. She's oddly quiet on the trek back to the village. She must be too shy to speak. The villagers are very pleased with what a good job you've done, slaying the Overlord and saving a hostage. They throw a huge celebration in your name. You're remembered for generations as the greatest hero the village has ever seen. Triumphant hero end. Okay. So this time, we're going to attack the Overlord even earlier. Dutiful, dutiful, and destroy the Overlord. You lunge forward, driving your blade through the evil Overlord. She screams, then falls silent. The Overlord has been slain. Oh, it's the exact same thing. It just happens at a different point. Dingerop. Dingerop is a good uh, game. I thought the anime was okay, but uh, the game is very good. Poor Mirene, yeah. I mean, it all ended well. I was 
Ah, uh, okay. I had a, a qualm with the ending, but overall I thought it was good. But I don't want to say the specific thing, because spoilers. Alright, so I got all the bad endings at the top there. Um, okay, so now let's get this one in the middle. So, I need to run from the demons, be diplomatic, and then the overlord has to be possessive. So, I'm diplomatic, and the overlord is possessive. Alright. So, I'm gonna run from the demons, then I'm gonna be let in diplomatically, and now we have a new scene. The Overlord and Maiden seem to be in the middle of some casual conversation when you barge in. You all look at each other in surprise and confusion. This is no time to hesitate. The Maiden explains she was never actually captured, and that she came here of her own volition. That was a pretty dangerous thing of her to do, but no one got hurt, so at least there's that. You ask her to return to town with you to reassure everyone of her safety. But the Overlord objects to this. The Maiden tries to tell her that she'll come right back, but the Overlord refuses to hear it. The Maiden seems nervous. As a hero, it's your job to mediate situations like these. You tell the Overlord that if she doesn't let the two of you go, you'll have to assume she's evil and you'll be forced to vanquish her. You leave me no choice. The Overlord pauses before suddenly jumping you. You're helpless as she disembowels you with her claws. How horrible! You came all this way only to be met with this cruel fate. You should have destroyed those evil creatures while you had the chance. Your dying wish is for the Maiden to somehow make it out of this alive. Naive hero end. Okay, so we got another ending there. We've got half of the hero now. So... I guess, yeah, so like, I've gotten to this point, but I can't get to this ending because it's missing a Maiden thing. So Maiden, Maiden. Maiden. So every single ending now with the hero is blocked by the Maiden. So I have to go back to playing as the Maiden. That's for Zombies Garden Warfare 2 reference. I have no idea. I've never played it. Um... Everything here, I need new scenes. Oh, I can get another new one with the hero here, so let me do that quick. Um, so regardless of whether the hero is dutiful or diplomatic, as long as he's heroic, I'll still end up at this bad end. So... Let's say, he, okay, I'm gonna make him diplomatic, but also heroic. All right, so I'm gonna give them the day off. They'll bring the maiden back. I'll let her stay in chat. The hero suddenly strikes, cutting you through with his blade. He didn't even hesitate. Oh, you've gone soft. How could you have let your guard down like that? How unfair. After all you've done to avoid this outcome, you can't outrun your destiny. The hero always slays the overlord. You should never have trusted a human. You watch as the hero escorts the maiden out of your castle. Captured by a demon, at least she got what she came here for. You join your army in eternal slumber. The slain overlord ending. Okay. So that differs. Okay, yep, so that went up. So then again, Maiden. So Maiden is blocking every single thing. So now I'm going to go back to playing as the Maiden. I didn't even know that Plants for Zombies had lore, to be honest. <laughs> Alright, so let's start by working our way bottom to top. So... I'm going to stay with the Overlord, and then the hero is going to be diplomatic, the Overlord is going to be possessive. So, diplomatic hero, possessive Overlord.
All right. So I'm going to introduce myself. We have to be nice if we're going to get brought back. Um, all right. The demon doesn't really seem to have been listening to you, which is a little irritating. They agree to take you to their master nonetheless. After a long walk to the castle, you're introduced to the overlord. You explain why you've come and she squints at you. It turns out she never had any plans to capture maidens or to do anything else that would agitate the humans. You wonder for a moment if she might be lying, but it doesn't really seem like it. Still, this doesn't make any sense to you. You've always been told that demons would one day seek you out, and something awful would happen, that a hero would come to your rescue. You don't want to believe that you've been lied to all along. Maybe it's just that you haven't been maiden-like enough. You ask the overlord what you should do to be a more suitable maiden, but she doesn't seem to understand. Just go home and stop worrying about destiny so much. She makes it sound so simple. This overlord seems like the complete opposite of you. You want to learn more about her and how she thinks. You insist on staying to talk with her more. The overlord shares many stories about demons with you, and little by little, you realize they might not be the ruthless monsters that you were raised to believe. As it turns out, she commanded her demons to avoid towns and villages. She didn't want to risk giving the humans any excuse to send a hero out after them. You realize that must be why you've never heard of any demons attacking your town. You express your gratitude to the overlord on behalf of your village. She says you can thank her by telling the humans to stop raising heroes. She's tired of her servants getting killed off by them. You've always thought demons were violent and unreasonable creatures, but it seems the overlord could say the same of humans. You may be different, but really they're just trying to live their lives the same as you. You feel like you're starting to understand things a lot better. But maybe everything I've said was to deceive you and the other humans. What would you do if I turned out to be super evil all along? Even if she were able to capture you now, you think this place is far more interesting than the way things are back home. You kind of like not being told to expect demons to come after you all the time. You feel free. Honestly, you've always kept to yourself, but spending time with this overlord has been very nice. You feel butterflies in your stomach. The overlord made in Yuri route is real. As you think that, a hero enters the room. You're surprised to see him at first until you realize he must have been sent to retrieve you. Confused, the hero asks you what's going on. You explain the situation, reassuring him that you were never in any danger. The hero expresses his relief that this whole misunderstanding hadn't led to any horrible consequences. You apologize for causing trouble, but really, didn't anyone read the note you left? Jeez. The hero asks if you'll return to the village with him to give everyone the news of your safety, but the overlord objects to the hero's suggestion. You tell her you plan on returning soon, but she isn't having it. You feel nervous. The hero puts on a brave face for you. If you won't let her go, maybe you demons are evil after all, and if you are, I'll be forced to vanquish you. You leave me no choice. The overlord suddenly jumps the hero. She tears into him with her claws. You want to cry out, but the scream catches in your throat. You watch because you can't look away. Has she really been lying to you all along? You wonder, is this your punishment for questioning the divine plan? The overlord approaches you now. You back yourself into a corner. Her expression is complicated. Being captured by the overlord in a horrible way like this was your destiny after all. She vows to keep you very safe from now on. You're afraid to find out what that means, but there's no one left to save you. You belong to the overlord now. All right, captured maiden and A. So I guess and B would just be having the overlord not be possessive. So we're just gonna make the same choices and just uh, change it at the very end. All right, here we go. The overlord allows the two of you to leave and you give her a little wave as you exit the room. You'll be back soon. You're about halfway back to the village when you feel something is off. Unable to shake your concern, you look back over your shoulder. You stop in your tracks. The castle is engulfed in flames. Is the overlord all right? You can't return to the village like this, you have to know. You have to be sure that everyone is safe. You've already taken off before the hero can even think of stopping you. You scan the fleeing demons, but the overlord isn't among them. Against your better judgment, you rush into the burning castle to find her. You quickly reach the overlord's room, but the door is shut tight. 
The handle is too hot to touch. You're too weak to force it open. You pound your fists against the door helplessly. What were you thinking? This is all because you'd forgotten your role. Only a hero could pull this kind of thing off. You start to cough. The smoke is too thick, you can hardly breathe. You realize you haven't got much time left now. You desperately head toward the stairs to save yourself, but the fire spread faster than you expected. You won't make it outside. You can't help but laugh. What a joke. A maiden saving the overlord? If you just stayed true to your role, things wouldn't have ended like this. This is exactly the kind of punishment that you deserve. You let the demon fire cleanse your rotten soul. Wow. Well, I didn't expect, damn, the achievement picture is her crying. Uh, okay, so that was, that wasn't the two bottom ones. That was a different, that was all the way at the top. Okay, I thought I was going to the bottom. <laughs> um, but somehow I ended up at the top. So, this time I need to make the same choices, but the underling needs to be disloyal. But there's three different ways that could play out. So here, if I stay with the overlord, and the hero is- oh, I get it. So if the hero is diplomatic, and the underling is disloyal, then it goes in this route. If the hero is not diplomatic, Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. If the Overlord is not possessive, it goes in the top route. If the Overlord is possessive, it goes in the bottom route. So I want the Overlord to be possessive. That way, I will get the second bottom bad end. The one right to the right of this underling. Alright. Introduce yourself, get brought back to the castle. Oh boy. Alright. So what happened right before this? So this is after the hero gets killed. The overlord stops, or rather, someone has stopped her. Whatever held back your scream before doesn't stop you this time. The overlord is being ripped to shreds by one of her demon underlings. You think you recognize them, but it's hard to tell with all of the blood. Everyone has stopped moving now. The room is silent, save for the underlings' heavy breathing. You thank them for what they've done. Even though it was awful, you feel you've been rescued from a terrible fate. They look at you, confused for a moment, but then puff out their chest. You should probably go home. This place is dangerous. You follow their advice and make your way out of the castle. You decide never to leave home again for the rest of your life. Oh, okay. All right, so that should have been the other bottom one. Yeah, okay. Um, so I guess the underling being disloyal is the trigger for pretty much everything. Yeah, also disloyal up here. Um... Alright, so if I have a dutiful and heroic hero, then I'll get another ending. So it doesn't matter what they are. I just need him to be dutiful and heroic. Alright, introduce yourself. Alright, so it should jump to the conversation between me, the hero, and uh, the overlord. Yep, a hero barges into the room. His clothes are stained by a dark liquid. It's dripping from his weapon, too. You realize it must be demon blood. Something horrible has happened. The hero suddenly dashes toward the overlord, sword drawn. Protect her or do not- Oh, so then I unlock martyr. I get it. So the grayed out ones are because it requires a trait for the character that I haven't unlocked yet. So I'm going to do nothing to see the ending, and then I'll switch and protect. The hero's blade pierces the overlord, and she lets out a horrible scream. You flinch. The overlord is slain. The hero smiles and holds out his hand to you, saying it's time to go home. His glove is drenched in blood. Hesitantly, you take his hand. The hero guides you through the castle, past the corpses of his enemies. 
You try to keep your eyes at your feet. There's blood everywhere. You shut your eyes, but even then, you can't escape the smell. All of this was because of you, wasn't it? You exit the castle, and the hero leads you back to the village. Everyone celebrates the hero's great triumph over the demons. You feel sick, but you take part in the festivities regardless. Complacent Maiden. Alright, reset. This time, I'm going to be a martyr. That's right. Protect the Overlord. You selflessly throw yourself in front of the hero's blade, acting as a shield. It's funny, you think. You never could have imagined that this would be the way that you die. The roles are all switched around, but it feels right to you somehow. You are glad that your destiny turned out to be saving someone, rather than being saved yourself. As your vision fades, you hope that everything turns out alright for your new friend. So that's probably going to unlock some traits or some arcs for the uh, the hero and the overlord, where they kill each other. Um, Alright, let's go back to Maiden. So we've done... Alright, we've done all of these bottom ones. Um, so to get up to the top, you need an anti-social overlord and a dutiful hero. And then that should bring us to this other ending. Dutiful hero, anti-social overlord. Uh, anti-social. Overloid? I have no idea why you're hearing that. Um, Alright, so Maiden. And we're just going to be polite at the start. So this should bring us something new. Yep. Uh, so the Overlord tells you that you should just get lost. How rude, you just got here. Obey her? Oh, so then you unlock the obedient route. So if I refuse to leave, what happens? You put your foot down and tell her you're not going anywhere. You still want to fulfill your destiny even if you have to make it happen on your own. She's a little frustrated at your stubbornness, but doesn't kick you out or anything. Hooray. Uh, alright, and then I've seen all of this. You can only guess what kind of horrible scene that he's left for her. The Overlord tears the hero apart in retaliation. You watch silently, unable to scream. The Overlord, who you had just been getting along with so well, has killed another human right in front of you. It's clear now that you had been deceived by her sweet words. Demons are ruthless monsters after all. You somehow manage to slip past the Overlord and make it out of the blood-soaked castle. You never look back. Oh, so that's just a variant of an ending I already had. I see. Um... Alright, so I just need to make the other choice this time. So here, I need to obey her and leave. And I unlock the obedient trait. You don't want to cause any trouble, so you figure it's time to go home. Along the way, you encounter a hero. He's covered in demon blood. You're frightened by the sight of him and run away. You return to the village alone. Everyone was very worried about you. They surround you with a thousand questions, and you tell them your story. As you explain that the Overlord never had any intentions to harm anyone here, you notice the looks of uncertainty in the crowd. People are whispering things to each other while you speak to them. Uh, you are loudly interpreted, interrupted <laughs> by an older man. He rudely calls you a demon sympathizer. The crowd is un growing unruly. You don't understand. You've only told them the truth. Do they not believe you? Everyone begins speculating what must have actually happened. They weave elaborate lies and ask you to prove your innocence. How could you have returned without the aid of a hero, they ask. You could not have possibly escaped the Overlord on your own without harm. You must be conspiring with the demons, trying to trick everyone into believing they aren't the horrible creatures that we know them to be, so they say. Have the people of your village always been this blinded by their fears and hatred of things they've never cared to know? That's applicable to today, isn't it? You wonder how you missed that before. 
You're seized by the crowd and voices from all sides are calling for public execution. You are to be burned at the stake. You don't want to die. You wonder, would it have been better to hide the truth? You don't like the thought of that. You've always lived honestly. So why has this happened? Why are you being punished? You hear the dissenting voices of your family and neighbors, but they, like you, are powerless against the momentum. They can only watch as you burn, and you can only cry for them. You're so sorry. You must be a witch. No, not the witch. What is wrong with these people? Uh, that just seems like the uh, mobs of the internet today, if you ask me. Meta commentary. Yeah. So, if the hero isn't dutiful, he wouldn't be covered in blood, right? And if he's not covered in blood, then that probably makes a different thing happen at the end? I don't know. Does that have a different chart? Burned at the stake. Okay. Yeah, so I get burned at the stake regardless, it seems. I want to play it out though. I want to see, do I come, if he's not dutiful, if he doesn't kill the thing or the initial demons, like if I set him as diplomatic, let's say, so he doesn't kill those demons. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to obey her and leave. All right. So does this cause something different? You encounter the hero. He asks what you're doing. Don't you know the Overlord's castle is, like, right there? You explain everything that happened. The hero seems to think you're lying to him. He asks if you've been brainwashed by the demons. What nerve! You're very upset that this so-called hero would treat you this way and leave in a huff. Oh, yeah, so then it just ends the same way. Okay. <laughs> uh, great. That goes well. Um, alright. What other arcs can we do here? So it looks like if I am obedient and the overlord is antisocial and the underling is disloyal. All right. Me obedient, disloyal, antisocial. And it doesn't matter for the hero. And then it will it should go up to this very top right one. I think. So I need to be obedient and leave. That's it. All right, so introduce yourself. Uh, I'm gonna be obedient. All right, so now it should do something different. Uh, wait a second, this is the... What? So I need something for the hero there. Why didn't that go up to the t Oh, is it because I don't have the other hero thing that I need? But then how did I get up here in the first place? I think it was by making the hero diplomatic, right? Does that change anything? No? Alright, so I must need a different hero trait then. Or hero trait then. So I guess I can't do anything else with her then, because every other route has something different. You've been burned at the stake four times. I know, I'm not very lucky there, huh? <laughs> okay, so the hero has a new one. So I need dutiful and heroic hero and the martyr maiden. Oh, I see. Okay. Dutiful, heroic, and martyr. So then this is just going to end with the hero killing the maiden. Alright, so I'm dutiful. I slice through the first one. Dutiful again. And then, alright, so when I try to kill the overlord here, the maiden will sacrifice herself. You lunge forward to put an end to the evil overlord, but your blade pierces the maiden instead. She has sacrificed herself to protect this demon. Oh, so now we'll see what happens after the Maiden dies. Because we saw this through the Maiden's perspective before. They want me medium rare. <laughs> wow, I sure hope I'm tasty. Uh, it takes you a moment to recover from the shock. The Overlord wails. Why did you do that? You're not sure if the question is directed at you. 
The Overlord strikes at you in a vengeful rage. You parry and she's slain. Your sword feels heavy. You look at your hands, your clothes. Blood. So much blood. You look to the fallen maiden, wondering what to tell the townspeople. Why would she protect the Overlord? She must have been brainwashed by demonic magic. You pick up the Overlord's head, wrapping it in your cape, and begin your long journey back to town. You'll say that you were too late, that nothing could be done for the girl, but the Overlord is slain. There will be celebration. The loyal hero end. Okay. So that... Yep, that got me to here. So then I also can get to another ending. If we have an antisocial overlord, a dutiful... It doesn't matter for the hero, but the maiden has to be obedient. Leo lying? What can I say? No, I mean, you should know, Oblivion. I'm a horrible liar. Our Among Us clap proved it. The false hero? Yeah. I mean, technically, the hero did kill the demons and the overlord. He just also killed the maiden, which he's conveniently not saying. Oh, oh, I see. So if I go down this way, I'll unlock a new hero thing. And that's what I'm going to need for, like, her route here. All right, so let's do the other one then. So we'll have antisocial, dutiful, and obedient. Alright, so we slay the creatures. On your way to the Overlord's castle, you spot a maiden heading back toward the village. Uh, she couldn't have come from the Overlord's castle, could she? This may be the exact maiden that you're currently seeking to rescue. You approach her with curiosity, and she runs from you for some reason. You wonder what that's all about, but then you remember you're covered in demon blood. Not wanting to look like you're a crazy person chasing after her or anything, you nonchalantly walk back to town. As you walk past the town square, you notice the whole crowd, or the whole village is crowded around, is that the maiden you saw earlier? She's bound to a wooden stake. The crowd is in a frenzy. Smoke begins to rise and you stand idly by as flames consume the maiden. She must have done something horrible to deserve that. You decide to call it a day and return to your house, but you can't escape the sinking feeling. Maybe you aren't cut out for this role. Clearly not. The spectator hero watches the maiden burn. Oof. Alright, so then the difference to go in the other direction is if I am not... Uh, so I need to talk to the maiden. Which means I can't be dutiful. Leo letting her die like that? I mean, <laughs> I guess I could have theoretically rushed it, but... It didn't give me the option, what could I do? Alright, so I'm gonna flee like a coward. Alright, so the maiden will come back. So we spot the maiden. Uh, this may be the exact maiden you're currently seeking to rescue. You ask the maiden what she's doing. Doesn't she know the overlord's castle is like, right there? It's dangerous. The Maiden explains that she spoke with the Overlord, and it turns out the demons never had any diabolical plans to harm the village or anyone in it. Ah, trusting. So that's the new trait that I would unlock. Alright, so I'm gonna do the bad thing and not trust her. You aren't sure you should listen to this Maiden. You've been taught your whole life that demons are evil. You ask if she's sure about all of this, but she gets very upset that you think she would lie to you. She storms off before you can say anything else. Oh, so then it's gonna be her burning at the stake again. You take your time walking home. Job well done today, you think to yourself. And she burns up the stake. She seemed nice though, you think. But evil comes in all forms, you reassure yourself. You decide to call it a day and return to your house. So that's the alternate route, okay. So we're gonna reset and this time I'm gonna be trusting and we'll unlock a new route. All right, flee like a coward, believe her story. You have no reason to assume she's lying to you, even though her story is kind of hard to believe. You feel like you should trust her. You tell her you're pretty surprised that everyone has been wrong about demons all along. The townspeople must be informed of this immediately. The two of you return to the village. 
They'd all been so worried, they praise you for your bravery. But the maiden quickly sets the record straight. There was nothing she needed to be rescued from in the first place. The villagers look to you for explanation. You politely inform them that it isn't your story to tell. You merely ran into her on the way to the castle. She explains that the overlord isn't interested in capturing maidens or anything of the sort. The villagers turn to you again in disbelief. They aren't being subtle in how little they trust the maiden's story. I love her angry face. <laughs> it looks so good. He was gonna die with her. That's what I'm thinking too. Both get burned. You totally believe her, but to placate these fair citizens, you volunteer to speak to the demons personally, just in case. The crowd breaks into hushed whispers. You're too busy thinking what a great and reliable hero you are to hear what they're saying. The town's elder voice, the town elder's voice breaks you out of your thoughts. He implores you to meet with the overlord immediately and says they'll all keep an eye on the maiden until you return. You figure that sounds all right, but the mood is kind of intense for some reason. Did you miss something? You aren't sure what's going on, but you get the feeling it might be bad to let the maiden on her own. Leave on her own. But she suddenly takes off running. Oh, you thought the two of you were in this together. Her actions have convinced the crowd that she's obviously been a liar and a witch from the start. People are shouting for you to hunt her and her demon friends down already. But that doesn't sound like a very heroic task. You can't help but feel these people are wrong. It's up to you to catch up to her and talk to the demons in order to clear up this misunderstanding. You valiantly dash after the maiden toward the hero, the overlord's castle. The air becomes dark and thick as you enter deep into the demon territory. Evil miasma? 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 No, you realize it's normal smoke. You see the maiden ahead, but she's stopped in her tracks. The overlord's castle is engulfed in flames. You'd only taken an eye off the maiden for a second, but she's already disappeared. You get closer to the castle, but the smoke is so thick now, you think of turning back. The maiden might need your help, but you can barely see. She could be impossible to find. She could have been lying to you all along. Was this a trap? Was it worth risking your life on that chance? Your legs feel heavy. No, going in there would be suicide. You'll return to the villagers and tell them there was nothing you could do. You were too late. The maiden was claimed by the demons. Wow. Some hero. Uh, so that goes to this bad end. And once again, I do not have uh, one of the... Alright, so all of the hero paths now are blocked off again. I'm missing a maiden thing? Uh, wait a second. So if I'm diplomatic, the overlord isn't possessive, and the underling is disloyal. Is that a new route? So diplomatic, disloyal, and not possessive. So that should take me down this, like, middle route. I think. Burning down the house? Well, castle, technically, yeah. So what I want to do is run away and be diplomatic to go into... Okay. So I just need to act like a coward. So flee like a coward. Ask if they'll let me in. Alright, so now it should go to a new scene. Uh, the overlord and the maiden seem to be in the middle of casual conversation when you barge in. You look at each other in surprise and confusion. This is no time to hesitate. Ask the maiden what's going on. The maiden explains that she was never actually captured and that she came here of her own volition. That was a pretty dangerous thing to do. You ask her to return to town to you to reassure everyone of her safety. All right, so this is the different part. The overlord allows, you the, two, allows the two of you to leave and you casually exit the castle. You pause when you see a group of suspicious demons standing near the entrance. They're talking about assassinating their overlord. This proves to you that demons really are foul creatures. We have to tell her about this. You don't understand what the maiden is thinking. The world is better off with less demons. They're all cold, ruthless creatures that should be destroyed. And those same creatures have just noticed you eavesdropping. 
The maiden takes off into the castle, and you have no choice but to follow. You burst into the overlord's room. The maiden frantically tries to communicate what you just overheard. A demon underling barges in next, calling you liars. It's followed by the group from the entrance, who shifts the blame back onto the little one. These demons only care about themselves. How low can they be? You begin shouting at them, and the whole room devolves into noise until the overlord yells for everyone to shut their traps. She threatens them with violence. This overlord is no better than her subjects. You grip your sword tightly. If you have to cut through everyone here to get this maiden to safety, you certainly will. The group of demons hiss to each other before shutting the door, leaving the runt of the litter behind. You glance around for another exit, but there isn't one. You have a terrible feeling about this. In an instant, the whole room is in flames. What kind of demonic magic is this? The underling pounds on the door, upset that it's been betrayed. You join it, vowing to slay the cowardly demons on the other side. The next moment, the overlord has taken hold of the underling. It's crying for mercy. She thrusts her claws into the underling's chest and it lets out a horrible scream. You back away. You won't be the next target of her rage. She continues to dig and twist her claws into its limp body. You can no longer watch. You look to the maiden. She's crying, hands clasped in prayer. To have faith in a time like this, you envy her. The two of you, the overlord, and the underling's corpse are all consumed by flames. The end. The resigned hero end. So, then if I make her merciful instead, but I do the same thing, it should be the same ending, but she just doesn't kill the underling, right? Yeah. Oh, so is that going to be the true ending? Alright. No. Alright, let's do the exact same thing then. Play like a coward, be diplomatic, go in. Ask what's going on. We leave together. All right, so we're back at that part. Is she going to kill it as retribution? It continues to cry and make excuses, but the overlord does nothing. To your surprise, she lets it go. Are demons capable of mercy? You guess it doesn't matter now. You'll all burn together. The end. The hero's true end. Oh. So the true end for everybody is just going to be burning together while you're all alive? Okay, I, oh, yeah, yeah. So you're going to have to get all the true endings, and then it's probably going to come up with a way for you to, to like escape and save yourselves. No matter the perspective, the true ending remains the same. That's what makes it true. You couldn't resist seeing it for yourself, though, could you? I wonder what will happen when you collect them all. Will you give in to despair? Or... Despair? Is this Danganronpa? Alright, let's uncheck everything. So... The only one we don't have for the hero requires something that we do not have for the maiden. I mean, for the underling. For the maiden, uh, we have everything we need to get this one up top now. Oh, okay. We're still missing something for the maiden again, though. Oh, but then I can alternate and go here. For the underling, I'm missing something for the maiden. But... Oh, I could unlock something new for the underling here. That must be how I get the last underling. Everything you've done has only hurt them more? Well, excuse me. Thanks for streaming, Leo. Very much appreciate it. Makes quarantine manageable. Of course, Sebi, of course. Glad that it's made it more manageable. Hopefully you can get some good rest tonight. Uh, oh, I can get the last um, ending for the Overlord, actually. All right, let's do that then. I uh, get the final one. So we need the hero. So I want the hero to be diplomatic and heroic, and then the maiden to be a martyr. So he'll be heroic and diplomatic and a martyr. All right, before you even know how to react, he makes his move, and the maiden makes hers. She's used her own body to shield you from the hero's blade. Why? Why has this happened? The maiden falls to the floor, lifeless. As the pool of blood beneath her grows, so does your rage. The hero has taken something precious from this world. You lose control, and the hero is obliterated. 
but your hatred for the humans has not yet been sated. You go on to destroy them all and become ruler of the entire world. Wow. All right. A letter flutters down from beyond the curtain. Oh, because I got all of the Overlord endings? You found lost letter number four. All right, I'm going to read the letters after I unlock all of the endings. All right, yep, so we've gotten all of her endings. Um, all right, so let's unlock the other underling trait. So I need a polite and obedient maiden, a trusting hero, and an antisocial overlord. Light, obedient, trusting, antisocial. All right. So I think this should unlock me the underling's other trait. And to get on that route, uh, I need to... Oh, I have to be disloyal. Okay. All right. So we're going to hear her out, and I'm going to be disloyal. All right, so this should bring us to the new route. Um, but this is all stuff I've seen. Um, so I'm going to be the assassin. Oh, okay, so this is where it differs. Oh, we get overheard, right. You and your friends turn to notice the maiden from earlier has overheard your entire conversation. It would be bad for you if the Overlord found out about this. Oh, so I could become a captor. Use the Maiden for killing practice? Jeez. All right, let's do that. This is just the way it has to be, you declare, before jumping her and clawing her guts out. It turns out you're already an expert at ending lives. Your friends call you a show-off. You go back into the castle to wash off all the icky human blood. As you're finishing up, you hear the sounds of battle outside. A hero has come. Seeing the dead maiden must have made him pretty angry. You get to thinking, if this hero took down the overlord for you, everything might actually work out in your favor. You wait for things to die down outside before poking your head out. You spot the overlord and hero locked in battle. They've worn each other down, making this very easy for you. Once an opening presents itself, you hit the back of the hero's head, knocking him out. What are you doing? I couldn't tell you this was a duel? Or couldn't you tell this was a duel? You don't respond. You have to carry out the assassination. You tackle her and rip her to shreds with your claws until she stops moving. You finish off the hero next. You can't let him revive and come after you later. Kind of a cheap victory, but it doesn't make any difference. Anyone who managed to survive comes crawling out of their hiding places. You are the new ruler of this castle. Your subjects bow before you. You live in fear that one day they'll betray you as you have betrayed your overlord. Alright, so that's a slightly different ending. So I need this to be the same thing, but this time I'm going to get the captor trait. Alright, so we're going to hear her out. We're going to be disloyal. And now we're going to be a captor. You and your friends seize the maiden and bring her to the dungeon under the castle. It's empty save for decorative skulls. They're only there to make it feel more spooky. That was a pretty good ending. The maiden is very upset. You leave her in the cell to continue scheming with your friends. But now a hero has arrived at the front gates. He's asking about a maiden. Perhaps the very one that you just locked up. I need a hydrate break. I finished my tea. Alright. The gatekeeper, who must have seen everything, tells the hero exactly what happened. What an idiot, you think. Why give the hero an excuse to start slaughtering us? The hero yells, prepare to face justice, and other such cliche hero lines before driving his sword into the gatekeeper's torso. You're, s you're small compared to a lot of your friends, so you're able to slip away without getting cut up by the sword. Oh, and then this just loops around to be the same thing. But the Maiden is still alive. So you hit the Maiden. You assassinate the thing. 
Oh, okay. So her being a captor, the only point of that then was to get the trait. So now I'm missing something for the maiden. This is also missing the maiden. Uh, him being a captor unlocks a new ending. All right, so let's get the very last thing for the hero then. Uh, so we're gonna have an antisocial demon king, an obedient uh, maid, a trusting hero, and a disloyal captor. Oh my god, so many options. Antisocial, obedient, trusting, disloyal, captor. Oh, everything is already picked. Okay. So... Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Double check that that's the right. Those are the only things, I think. Antisocial, obedient, trusting, disloyal captor. Trusting, obedient, disloyal captor, antisocial. Okay. Been mesmerized for like two hours, didn't even realize that much time had passed. Gotta get this game. Well, I'm glad to hear you've been enjoying it, Master. Um, it's pretty cheap. I think it's base price is like $10, and I got it on sale for definitely less than that. Um, so pretty good value. Well, I am glad to hear that all of you are enjoying it. Very, very nice. And we're getting close to, uh, having everything. 34 out of 41. We're about to get the last hero. Alright, so... I want to be a coward and then trusting. Okay. Coward and then trusting. Coward trusting. Coward trusting. Uh, coward trusting. All right, so I'm going to run. I'm going to be trusting. All right, so now this should set us out on something new. You tell her you're pretty surprised that everyone's been wrong about demons, townspeople must have been informed. Okay, so this stuff is still gonna be the same. We're gonna run back to the castle. Uh, you figure that sounds all right, but the mood is kind of intense for some reason. They need an Oscar for the music. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice chiptune. I do like chiptune music. Um, she takes off running. Um, so we're gonna run after her. They're wrong. You valiantly dash after the maiden. When you reach the gates, you ask the demons if they've seen the maiden. They have. They inform you she's being held in the dungeon at the moment. She trusts them, and in return, they lock her up. So demons are truly evil beings after all. You demand that you, they take you to her, but they do not let you pass. You should have expected as much from these unreasonable creatures. You know what you must do. You thrust your blade through the demon before uh, before you and rush the castle alone. You're the only one who can save the maiden now. What the fuck are you doing killing all my soldiers? The overlord is angry. You vow to exterminate her and all of demon kind. You clash again and again, but the overlord isn't going down easy. You're both dangerously low on health when everything goes black. Your quest has come to an abrupt end. The unlucky hero end. Oof, RIP bro, yeah. <laughs> Letter flutters down from beyond the curtain. You found lost letter number one. All right, so we have completely finished the hero and the overlord. Uh, all right, so I need to finish underling. I need the maiden's last trait. So I have to go back to maiden. And to get the maiden's last trait, I have to... Uh, I need to be obedient. All right, so anti-social overlord, obedient maiden, and trusting hero. All right. And when I do that, actually, let's clear the stuff on the top first before we do that. 
You ever gotta have dinner? Sounds good, Strawberry. Hope you enjoy your dinner. Um, Alright, so I'm gonna set the underling to be disloyal, but not a captor. And then I'm gonna clear these two on the top before I then clear the ones in the middle, which should then completely finish the maiden. Alright. So I need to choose to leave and then return to see the overlord. All right, so I introduce myself. I choose to leave. All right, so now we're on the new route for the maiden. He's very surprised that demons don't seem to be as malicious as you were raised to believe. The two of you return to the village, hoping to communicate this, this to everyone. They'd all been so worried and are very glad the hero brought you back. You quickly set the record straight. You weren't rescued because there was nothing to be rescued from in the first place. The villagers seem confused and look to the hero for an explanation. He tells them he only ran into you on his way to the castle, and that this isn't really his story to tell. You explain to them how you met the Overlord, and she's not actually interested in capturing maidens or other mean things like that. The villagers look again to the hero for confirmation. You feel a little miffed that they seem to prefer his word over yours, but you don't say anything about it. The hero proclaims that he believes your story, but volunteers to go talk to the demons himself, just to make absolutely sure. The crowd breaks into hushed whispers. You hear words like trickery and demon sympathizer being thrown around, which makes you frown. You're pretty shocked that everyone's this hesitant to believe you. Does the hero even trust you? You aren't sure anymore. An old man implores the hero to go speak with the overlord immediately. He says you should be held prisoner and considered dangerous until the hero returns. Much to your disbelief, the crowd agrees with him. Because of course, if you were conspiring with the demons, they can't afford to let their guard down. This whole village would be slaughtered by monsters. The hero isn't saying anything. You'll be tied up and tossed into a cell at this rate. If you're going to be held captive by anyone, it's going to be the overlord, not your fellow countrymen. Grab the hero and run it unlocks the resolute one. Okay. So that's the new trait. So we're going to leave on our own. That'll unlock the new ending at the top. You can prove yourself without anyone's help. You make a run for the Overlord's castle, leaving the hero behind. A suspicious group of demons stands just outside the entrance. They're talking about assassinating the Overlord. They immediately notice you overheard them. The underling you recognize from before is the first to do something about it. This is just the way it has to be. They suddenly attack you. In that moment, you regret ever having trusted the demons. You die instantly. Slaughtered maiden ending. All right. So we're going to do the same thing, but he is going to be a captor this time. So this one will end with me locked up. So introduce yourself, obey and leave, uh, leave on my own. Alright, they immediately notice you overheard them and decide to lock you in the dungeon before you can cause any trouble. You cry out, but the demons ignore your protests. You can't believe you escaped possibly being thrown in a cell back in your village only to be tossed in this awful place. This is terrible. Who's going to keep these demons from harming the Overlord? Welcome back, Strawberry. You hope she can fend for herself. You sure can't. You hear the sounds of battle echoing through the halls outside. Did the hero follow you? If he's out there, your cries don't reach him. Um, after a while, the violence seems to die down. It's impossible to tell what's happened. You continue to wait, but no one comes for you. Unable to escape, you rot in that cell. Imprisoned made an end. All right. So now... I can finish the maiden by having her be resolute. Um, so he's not going to be a captor. But she will be resolute. All right. So she's going to be obedient, resolute, yeah, disloyal, trusting. Okay, that should do it. I believe underling uses they... I am not sure. It might have come up and I just glazed over it in, uh, as I was reading. I guess we'll see as we... Uh... <laughs> I'll pay a little bit more attention as I'm reading to see if it comes up. Uh, on this last maiden route, or the underlings routes. Alright, so we're playing as maiden. We 
you're going to introduce ourselves, we're going to obey and leave, and then we're grabbing the hero and running, and this sets us on the final path. You boldly announce that you'll accompany the hero to prove yourself. You'd rather risk what's out there instead of staying in a village that doesn't trust you. No one seems to know how to react. You grab the hero by the wrist and take off before anyone stops you. Uh, near the castle's entrance, you spy a group of suspicious demons congregating. They're talking about assassinating the overlord. You have to warn her. But the hero shakes his head. He says that if this is the true nature of demons, the world is better off with less of them. This isn't right, you think? What kind of hero passes up the chance to save a life? The demons have taken notice of you. It's now or never. You take off into the castle and the unreliable hero follows shortly after. You burst into the overlord's room. All your words spilling out at once. You should probably slow down, but there's no time. The overlord seems to have followed your frantic explanation, but clearly doesn't understand the urgency of the situation. The underling you recognize from before barges in, calling you a liar. You're surprised they were a part of this evil plot. They seem so nice. Yeah, there's the they. Uh, the other demons come in right after them, saying the whole thing was the first underling's idea. Everyone's shouting at each other now. It's really stressing you out. You're relieved when the overlord demands silence. She threatens them with violence, and you think she is very overlord-like herself in the moment. The group of demons hiss to each other before shutting the door, leaving the little one behind. You watch as it pounds on the door in distress. Have they locked you all in? You have a bad feeling about this. And thinking they must have jinxed it because now the room is engulfed in flames. If you had ignored those demons before, you and the hero wouldn't have stumbled into this situation. If you had just pretended not to hear them, if you had left as you were told, only the overlord would have been killed. But you couldn't have done that. That path isn't an option for you. You think that no matter what, you'll always strive for the path where everyone survives. It must exist. It simply must. The Overlord seizes her underling. They beg for their life. You pray. You don't know what else to do, so you just pray. The Overlord's claws pierce the underling's chest. They scream an awful scream. She digs and twists her claws into the poor thing while you continue to pray. But there's no saving any of you now. You, the Overlord, the Hero, and the Underling's corpse are consumed by flames. Devout Maiden. Alright, so we're going to do the exact same thing, but this time they will be a merciful Overlord, and that will finish the Maiden. So, introduce yourself, obey, be resolute. Alright, the Overlord spares the Underling. You feel relieved, but does it make any difference? Will you all burn together? Yeah, that was fast. Okay, Maiden's true end. A letter flutters down from beyond the curtain. You found a lost letter number two. Keep collecting bad endings for now. Yes. We're not ready. We have to get all 41. All right, so we're going back to the underling to finish their route. So what do we need? A polite, obedient, and resolute. Okay, we have all of that. Uh, we want the hero to be trusting, nothing else matters, which he is, and we want the overlord to be merciful for the true ending. So, we're going to have her not be merciful. Alright, so the final, second to last ending is going to be the underling getting killed, and then the final one will be all four of them burning. And then I'll have these four letters, which I can read. Um, all right, so let's do that. So we're going to be underling. Going to hear out her. We're going to be disloyal. All right, here we go. You and your friends turn to notice a pair of humans have overheard your entire conversation. They take off into the castle. Are they heading to the overlord's room? Fuck. The overlord will kill you for sure if she found out you were conspiring to take her out. You dash into the castle after the humans. Sure enough, the Maiden's already frantically telling the Overlord everything. You shout that the humans are liars. Your friends soon arrive to back you up, except they don't. Instead, they blame the whole thing on you. They cry that it was all your idea, and that they were just going with the flow, too scared to refuse your crazy plan. You can't believe they'd tell the Overlord such a blatant lie. You always knew better than to trust them. You're the one who didn't have a choice here. 
you all shout at each other until the overlord demands silence. Regardless of who led this conspiracy, I have no choice but to punish everyone to keep you all in your place. Crush beneath my heel. She sounds tough, but lately all she does is sleep. You doubt her strength. You hear your traitorous friends mutter something about going back to plan A, and suddenly the door slams shut. You're trapped in here, with the overlord and the two humans. And then the room bursts into flames. You pound on the door, screaming curses at those who betrayed you. The hero joins you, vowing to slay the lot of them. You wish he would get the chance. The overlord grabs you by the throat. You cry for mercy. You were forced into this mess. You're sure now that they would have killed you if you'd sided with her. But the overlord doesn't hear your pleas. She drives her claws into your chest. At least she made it quick. All right. So let's get the final one. Set the overlord to merciful. So we're going to hear her out. We're going to kill the overlord. Here we go. To your surprise, the overlord spares you. Or maybe she'd rather see you suffer instead. Looking around, you've just gone from one dead end to another. The maiden is crying. The hero is silent. You'll all burn together. Underlings true end. All right, so we've gotten all 41 endings, including the four true endings. And we've gotten the four letters. You found lost letter number three. You set the stage. All right, so let's read the letters. Uh, so this is the hero. My love, it just isn't fair at all, is it? For them to force us apart like this, it's unreasonable, cruel. I had to find an outlet for this grief somehow, so I decided to write. And I'll keep writing until the day you find me once more. And then maybe we could write a story together. I'm waiting for that day. Forever yours, tragedy. Okay. Letter number two. My love, I've finally fulfilled a childhood dream of mine. Yes, that's right. I opened up my very own theater. You would be so proud if you could only see it. I know how much it would have meant to you to be at my side on opening night. I'm sorry for going ahead without you, but I thought if my theater could become world famous, then maybe you just might hear of it wherever you are. Forever yours, tragedy. Letter number three. My love, I've been feeling a little depressed lately. Many patrons have come to my theater, but none so far have stayed to experience every tale in its entirety. The critics haven't exactly been kind, but I understand. My stories aren't exactly crowd pleasers. Despite that, you always listen to the very end. I'm grateful for that. Hope to see you again soon. Forever yours, tragedy. And the final letter. My love, do you remember when we first met? I had just finished one of my scripts, one I was quite proud of, in fact. As I read it aloud, you happened to pass by. What a terrible ending, you said. Why should these poor fools have to die? You were so rude and wouldn't accept any of my justifications. And yet, you managed to convince me. It really would be better if everyone could live in harmony, however unrealistic that felt. I look back fondly on that day, even now. I wonder if somewhere you're thinking of it too. Forever yours, tragedy. Why do they have to die? If only there were a way to save them. I did notice on the flowchart, there's this thing that popped up on the side. Congrats, you've explored every path I had to offer. Thanks for playing. I refuse to believe it. It can't end like this. Here we go. You want to answer the maiden's prayers. You've decided to find a way to save everyone. But retracing the paths you've seen so far, there doesn't seem to be any room to avoid a bad ending. Is there really nothing you can do to keep them all from getting killed in the end? If there's nothing you can do by acting from within their story, maybe it's time to take things into your own hands. Wow. You are who- it's, Oh my god, so I get to like insert myself as a character and I can affect things? Okay, quite the twist. You boldly insert yourself into the story and use your incredible power to warp everyone to safety. You don't know, you didn't know you could do that, but what's going on here? You take a moment to get a good look at yourself. You are you, but why are you pitch black? You feel that this body doesn't accurately represent you, but you move past it. 
The hero, maiden, underling, and overlord have been staring at you too. They look like they don't really know what they're supposed to do right now. You guess that's because you're usually the one guiding them. All the traits say on fire, that's an interesting touch. Yeah, <laughs> right, because technically at that point in the story, they're, uh, they're all burning. What will you say to them? Hi guys, I've come to save you. Uh, I've come to save you. You explain to the group that you've witnessed their many terrible intertwining fates, and now you're searching for a good ending. Of course, this makes no sense to any of them. Only the maiden understands your compassion. My prayers have been answered. You must be... for God? No, you're merely the player. If there was a god here, they'd be the final boss. That's just how these role-playing games go. Yeah, <laughs> especially JRPGs. Now you realize what the real true ending must be. Now, 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 enough of this. I admit I've been encouraging you all along, but a self-insert story? How passe? You watch helplessly as tragedy descends from the heavens. The person who wrote those letters? You didn't honestly believe that you were the one who could force your way onto this stage, did you? Or the only one? I am the narrator, storyteller, god of this world. Call me tragedy if you would like. Darkness envelops your party. You don't mind if I send each of them back to relive one of their many bad endings, right? You are alone in the darkness with me, tragedy. I sincerely hope you've been enjoying your time in my theater. Though I can't abide you stealing the show without permission, it's quite disrespectful. I'm sick of all these bad endings, I want to see something new. I want to see something new. Are you trying to say my bad endings have gone out of style? You have some nerve. You think defeating me might be the only way to see a better ending. It's all that's left for you, isn't it? Well, does this... This does sound like it could be entertaining. Show me what you've got. Time to fight God. The stage is set for your final battle against me, the God of this world. What will you do? How will you fight against tragedy itself? I'd love to see it. Attack or defend? Let's defend. You try closing off your heart to protect yourself, but it doesn't make you feel any better. Is that all? You'll never defeat me like that. You're right. Perhaps you don't understand just how outclassed you are here. Behold my beautiful, beautifully tragic tales. Doesn't seeing them all again make your heart ache? You've witnessed all 41 of my painstakingly crafted endings. You must be as much of a masochist as me. I commend your thoroughness. Surely these characters have a special place in your heart. They're still suffering backstage, you know. It's a shame they couldn't make it here to the end of the world. That's right. You came here to save them. You can't do this alone. What the heck? Summon! You find the hero in his home, hunched over a sewing table. Your sudden intrusion scares the hell out of the poor guy. A are you some kind of demon? You explain that no, you're not a demon. You're... How can you explain it in a way the hero can understand? Instead, you ask what he's sewing. Oh, this? I craft all my own hero gear. You sense his pride in his hobby. You wonder if the costumes are what attracted him to the role of hero. Would you like some clothes? You don't seem to be wearing any. You remember the state of your body and decide yes. Some clothes from the hero would be nice. He's overjoyed by your answer. Apparently his outfits are too gaudy for the other townsfolk, so no one else wants them. The true end for the hero suddenly becomes clear. You offer to change his fate. I could make a living as a tailor rather than being a hero? Please tell me what I can do to reach that dream. The hero will now fight alongside you. I agreed to follow you, but I didn't expect to face something like this. The hero has arrived, we really couldn't have a final boss battle without him. You're the one who's been killing us, murderer. I can't truly call myself a hero until I see you defeated. We'll see about that. Tragedy attacks with a terrible fate. Oh, my HP is all of the bad endings I found. So hero now has willpower and justice. I want him to have willpower. Your reign of terror ends here, tragedy. I refuse to give in. The hero uses his willpower to overcome tragedy. Tragedy is reeling. All right, let's summon another person. 
He happens to find the maiden as she exits the church, her heart set on meeting a demon. Perfect timing. She approaches you, having already taken notice of your odd form. Excuse me, are you a traveler? I've never seen anyone like you before. You explain that no, you're not a traveler. Well, maybe you are in a sense, you've come all this way. The maiden regards you with excited curiosity. Then perhaps you might be a demon? I was hoping I would meet one someday. Uh, you think of all of the terrible fates that hope would bring about. She is the catalyst of this story, after all. My role as a maiden is to be captured by the Overlord, but you see, I've grown so tired of waiting. You remember this part. She wanted to understand her role better, and so... You ask what it is that she's really hoping to gain from this. The maiden is confused by your question. Perhaps it was as simple as wanting to reach the place that she felt like she belonged. The true end for the maiden suddenly becomes clear. You offer to change her fate. If there's something I can do to find fulfillment, then please guide me. The maiden will fight alongside me. Excuse me, I am yawning like crazy now. What is this horrible creature? You wound me, dear maiden. Is tragedy really such a terrible thing to behold? I remember now. I remember all the awful things you put us through. Then this should be familiar to you as well. Tragedy attacks with a terrible fate. Alright, let's summon everybody. You approach the gates of the Overlord's castle. The underling is on guard duty as you expected. They call out to you. The other demon guard is sound asleep. Hey, you're a pretty weird looking intruder. What do you want? You explain that no, you're not an intruder, although you're definitely intruding into their story right now. You tell the underling you've come to save them from tragedy. Okay, try saving me from boredom first. I hate this job. The underling snickers. You ask what kind of job they would rather have. It would be best if I didn't have to work at all. I just want to live a carefree life and never get bossed around or picked on. You think of the underling's friends, who had bullied them into an assassination plot only to betray them in the end. If they kept better company, maybe they wouldn't feel so restless. The true end for the underling suddenly becomes clear. You offer to change their fate. So there's a way that even work can be fun? Sounds fake, but I'll tag along just in case. The underling will fight alongside me. Wait, what the fuck? You didn't say anything about a boss battle. The underling, huh? You must be desperate to call on such an unreliable ally. If I beat this guy up, all my problems will be over. Oh, but it won't be that easy. Tragedy attacks with a terrible fate. Alright, and... Let's summon... The Overlord. You enter the Overlord's room, relieved to see the fire contains the torches on the walls. When you close the door behind you, the Overlord rises from her slumber. Who are you? Have you come to reside in my castle and serve me? You explain that no, you're not here to serve her. It's more like you've come to do her a favor. You ask why she spends all day sleeping instead of commanding her demon army. She laughs in response. Many of my underlings certainly think I should be more aggressive with the humans like my father before me. His quest for revenge was endless and self-perpetuating. There's a reason I had to destroy him. You can't help but think it's a little late in the game to be getting a new backstory. I have no interest in waging war on the humans. I merely wish to be left alone, to live a peaceful, indulgent life in my castle. You realize that she must actually be very lonely, only surrounded by soldiers instead of friends. No wonder she got so attached to the Maiden. The true end for the Overlord becomes clear. You offer to change your fate. My own attempts at peace have read rather imperfect. If you offer a solution, then very well, I'll follow you. The Overlord will fight alongside us. And the entire party is assembled. I see, so this is tragedy. You've brought the Overlord. I don't stand a chance now. You've prevented me from attaining peace for long enough. Prepare to die. I hope you're prepared to face your deaths as well. Tragedy attacks with a terrible fate. Now the whole party's here. Can you solve my final puzzle? Which combination of behaviors will open the path to the true ending? Show me. Uh, all right. It's got to be willpower, hope, tenacity, and ambition. I mean, I feel like that's got to be the obvious answer. Our true endings do exist. They simply must. The maiden hopes with all her heart to overcome tragedy. Yep, there you go. Tragedy is reeling. The underling, tenacity. Knock me down and I'll just come back stronger. 
The underling uses their tenacity to overcome tragedy. Boom. Tragedy's reeling. Overlord, ambition. I'll reach my true ending with my own power. That's an anime line if I ever heard it. The Overlord uses her ambitious nature to overcome tragedy. This is it. With everyone's hearts united, you take aim toward your best possible futures. You all unleash one final attack to destroy tragedy once and for all. Hey, I was right. You've done it. You've managed to defeat me. A tragic ending for tragedy itself. I love it. I must thank you all for fulfilling your roles perfectly. Thank you, Hero, starring Hero as himself. Thank you, Maiden, starring Maiden as herself. Thank you, Underling, starring Underling as themself. Thank you, Overlord, starring Overlord as herself. Enough of this nonsense. We defeated you, so die already. Don't worry. I'll be making my exit shortly. Written and produced by Tragedy. <laughs> Directed by you! Finally, thank you most of all. We couldn't have made it here without you. Yes, my bad end theater did contain a truly good ending after all. I apologize for antagonizing you for so long. I wanted to deliver a satisfying story. Was I able to do it? I wonder. I'm satisfied. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Happy endings shouldn't always come easily. Reality is not so kind. But you've earned this one. Here's your true ending. Your true end achievement. Oh, oh, nice. So we have the hero is working as a tailor like he wanted. Nom nom nami. <laughs> the underling is on stage. So did they become some type of performer? Oh, there's an actual song. Oh, the Overlord and the Maiden at the town. Oh, the Underling and the Hero are there too. Oh. Overlord and Maiden together in the tower. That's the script for it, I assume. Entering the theater. Very meta at the start. Me following the tale that tragedy wove. Made with Renpai. Oh, I know that. Does tragedy get a happy ending? Does he meet the person he wanted to? Your true end. Ah, something's missing. So there is a little more, huh? What could be left? See you next stream, bro. Sounds good, Strawberry. Thank you for stopping by. I missed the end. Wait. <laughs> There you go. There might be a little something else, I guess. Take a bow, Leo. I, I'm trying to bow. All I do is bounce. Bow, bow. Bow, bow. Bow, bow. Ah, so it's me at a theater with tragedy. Oh, you're still here? The curtain is closed for the final time. I'm shutting down my theater. There are no more tragedies left for me to tell after all. There is one more Ask Tragedy It story. Leo's the true hero? Why, thank you, Saudi. Thank you. You think so highly of me. Me? You'd like to know why I started this theater? Because I'm obsessed with bad endings, of course. Remove the mask. Is it going to be me? You gently raise your fingers to the cracks in my mask. Piece by piece, it falls apart in your hands, revealing. Oh. Wait, am I the person that they've been looking for the whole time? 
I should have warned you this might affect what you think of my stories. You can't help but compare my face to the maiden's. I'm not her, but it's not like she isn't me, necessarily. That's how it is with fiction. Would you like to hear not another ending, but the truth? Tell me. All right, one last story. You may already know this, but it doesn't have a happy ending. First, I'll set the stage. In this world, there are no such things as demons or even heroes, really. There was a girl eager to set out, to fulfill some sort of destiny, that part was true. She met someone, another girl. Haha, <laughs> a running theme, isn't it? The Maiden and the Overlord. The two were inseparable, and for a time, everything was just wonderful. But their families, the communities they came from, neither could approve of their relationship. That's the reality for many. This pair was no different. Despite their best efforts, the world was intent on pulling them apart. She, no, we. We used to like the types of stories where love conquers all. Where the strength of your love will pull you through any hardship and everything is okay in the end. I lost her. And then I started this theater. But this story does have a happy ending. Huh? I am her! Oh my god. I was hoping to find you. It's you! It's been so long. I never thought I would see you again. You always think of the worst endings. I wasn't about to give up just because things got difficult. Why didn't you reveal yourself sooner? I feel like such a fool. I could say the same to you. You knew I could never resist giving your stories a happy ending. So of course I would be drawn to a place like this. Yes, but I didn't think it would actually work. Sometimes everything does turn out okay in the end. Thank you for reminding me of that. I love you. I love you too. Now, truly, everyone can live happily ever after. Tragedies end. Oh, the achievements description is just, I've missed you, darling. Well, I'm glad that even tragedy got the happy ending. You got their sad letters. They put on this whole sad play that ends up having a happy ending, and then they get their own happy ending. That's a nice way to wrap it up. Would have been a bummer if uh, tragedy themselves didn't get one. See you, Strawberry. Thanks for coming by. Have a good one. That was interesting. I agree. This is a game that has been on my list for a long time, too. Not as long as Alan Wake had been, but uh, very long. I think I picked the game up basically right around... Probably right around when I started streaming or just before. Thinking like, oh, I've heard this is good. This will be a good stream game. And now, uh, almost 14 months to the day, 14 months in a week, since I started streaming, I finally was able to play it. The sign on the door is different now. Oh, it says closed instead of open. Oh, there's a music. Final battle, your ending, your requiem. I like that one. The your requiem one. Reminds me of Refine Self a bit in terms of the ending. That is true. It does kind of have that same vibe. I think Refine Self was a little bit more bittersweet. 
but it it definitely has a similar vibe. Yeah. And some similar themes, I guess you could say. <clears throat> like the reunion and trying to find somebody who you care about a lot again much later. Uh, speaking of refine myself or refine self, I believe I saw Oblivion bought refine self when I was looking at my Steam activity at some point. <laughs> so I don't know if you're planning on playing or streaming that, but it was good. I would recommend it. But yeah, Bad End Theater. That was enjoyable. Love and loss. Yeah, yeah. Always a good theme. And one that tends to get me. Right in the feels. Like, just off the top of my head, a place further than the universe, planted, Violet Evergarden. Those are all some of my favorite... Oh, Fruits Basket, too. Those are all some of my like top 10 to 12 favorite anime, and all of those are heavy on the love and loss themes. And the kind of finding yourself. But love and loss are huge on those as well. How much? Is, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is $10. Wait, I don't have all the achievements? Hold up, I'm missing two achievements. What? What did I not get? Uh, let's take it again from the top. So I assume that's if you restart the game. Total reset. There's one hidden achievement. What is the hidden one? More people have the hidden one than the restart one? Oh, I see. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Get defeated by tragedy in the final boss fight is the other achievement. What the heck? So you know how when you look at the achievements, it tells you the percent? So... Roughly 68 to 70% of people saw, like, the true ending of where all four of them burned together, right? And then 70% also had beat tragedy in the boss fight. But only 57% collected the four letters, which means almost half of the players didn't actually go and get the true end for each of the four characters. And only 56% had the I've missed you, darling, like the reunion in the theater. I bet that's the requirement. You probably have to get all 41 of the things. You have to read all four of the letters. And that's what enables you to then get the bonus scene after the credits. Good job, me. <laughs> Surprised it's like a 15 to 20% difference though. Because, like, I mean, right there, I, I 100 percent of the game, aside from those two achievements. Which I could pretty easily get uh, if I just went back and speed ran it. But, like, what? So this has been three hour... Yeah, we're at three hours and one minute. So, like I said, it was like a two to three hour long game to uh, complete. Very short. But, yeah, I came here because I wanted to see how much it was. I'm pretty sure it's 10. It is 10. Oh, they have an art collection as a free DLC that you could also look at. Nice. Oh, they released plushies for Maiden and Overlord on Valentine's Day. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Um, the day... I assume the pre-orders are down. Yeah, it ended in the middle of March. Oh, but it did completely fun. So Maiden and uh, Overlord are going to have their own plushies. But it was a limited run and you had to pre-order it to get it. Dang. Well, they look cute. Um, 
Sorry, I got distracted looking at the Steam page. <laughs> um, bad Leo, I know. How dare I not get those other two achievements? Unforgivable. Um, just realized the mask changed too. Oh, was it frowning at the start? And now it's a smiley? Or maybe there was only one tier and now there's two? I guess I'd have to like completely reset the game to see. That's a neat detail though. Oh, the mask didn't? Music reminds me of Undertale Delta Room. Yet another game that's on my list to do on stream at some point. The thing with Undertale is like, I hear it's amazing. Um, I played like an hour of it like five years ago. Uh, I've listened to the soundtrack, I like it a lot, but the thing with Undertale is that I've been spoiled on the vast majority of the game. So it's because I really care about the story and stuff, like, it pushes me from actually playing it when I know, like, all of the endings that I could possibly get, because I feel like knowing the endings is going to influence how I play, whereas if I went into it blind not knowing what ending I was working towards, you know, and then being surprised. That's where the fun of it is for me. So... I don't know. I mean, it's not a long game, so it's probably worth experiencing at some point anyway. I think it's, what, like 10 hours? Um, but yeah, I've been spoiled on the ending. Multiple of the endings. Delta Rune, however, I have not played, and I basically know nothing about, other than that it's the same creator. I was not from. Okay. I mean, it's still a neat uh, touch to add the close sign to the door, if anything. Speaking of Undertale, though, that reminded me of Omori, which is another very popular indie, like, pixel art looking game that I also have not played. Well, okay, that's a lie. I played it for, again, like an hour, hour and a half, like two or three years ago. Didn't beat it, never went back to it. And that one I actually haven't been spoiled on, I don't think. If I have, I think I've forgotten it. So Omori is another one that I would like to play at some point. Switch port has an exclusive bot. No, I think you're right. I heard something like that. The Switch got, or maybe on release it was exclusive and then they might have patched it in to PC or something. But I think it did either at some point have an exclusive if it doesn't still currently have it. song? Oh. I was wondering what the heck this was. It's character select backwards. <laughs> I was trying to read it. I was like, what the hell is Kles Retkarak? No, it's character select backwards. Stupid. Silence. That is two uh, nice conflicting <laughs> opinions back to back. Good, not the best, but good. And then I love it. Just goes to show the uh, beauty of subjectivity with media. Just like how I loved summertime rendering and Zero dropped it after one episode. Almost made me end our friendship right when I heard that. J-Cell? Uh, what is J-Cell, Belenkin? asleep <laughs> no problem i mean you did say it was like 4 a.m for you so you were up super early i'm surprised you were even up long enough to pop in and say hi and stuff um 
since I know I am basically a blob of uh, in existence, a blob of a human being before the hour of like 6 to 6.30. Mistype? <laughs> no problem, no problem. They have something to do with the fact that I'm a sucker for Omari's themes. That would definitely do it. Because I think how much you can personally relate to the themes in a game or an anime or a movie or whatever it is. How much you can personally relate to the themes and how much you personally enjoy those types of themes. Um, yeah. I get where you're coming from. For sure. I like this track. I'm gonna have to see if it's on Spotify. Actually, I'm gonna open Spotify right now. Before I forget, I wanna see if Bad End Theater soundtrack is on Spotify. And if it is, I'm gonna add this to my playlist before I forget. It is! Oh my goodness. Your Requiem, there we go. Add to playlist. Soundtracks, yeah. What, is that not what my playlist is? Where is it? There it is. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, do they have the vocal version of the song? Because this is what plays during the credits, but it has the voices. Doesn't seem like it. Oh, there it is. There's the voices. Uh, don't like immediately playing games that people gawk over so much because then it feels like it's a FOMO game. Totally get where you're coming from, Oblivion, yes. I... I mean, it depends how much I'm personally... Like, if it's something I'm super excited about too, then yes, I just want to jump right in. Like Helldivers, like... Oh no, sorry, Helldivers was a little different. Helldivers I was casually interested in, and then I saw people, like, going crazy for it. And I watched some clips on, like, YouTube Shorts and TikTok and stuff. I was like, wow, that actually does look like a lot of fun. And then I picked it up, and I also had fun with it uh, for what I played of it. But then there's other games where it's like, I'm stoked for it. I'm going to jump right in as soon as it comes out. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's good to let the hype die down. I think I was kind of in that mindset with like Power World where like everybody was just blowing up over it. And I was like, I mean, it looks fine. Um, but it never like grabbed me, you know, at least based on the stuff I watched of it. actually like NyQuil either. I've only had it once or twice, but I hate grape flavored things, so yeah, I, I can't do NyQuil. Usually I just double up. I do like Advil. That's my go-to for anything headache. Is I have one Advil if it's a normal headache, and if it's a migraine or a really bad headache, then I have two Advil. And that's basically all I do. <laughs> that and drink water and Otherwise, I guess it's just waiting it out, which sucks, but I'll wait until I want to play the game myself before playing highly praised games. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Um, and I also feel like the more I hear a game get praised, the less likely I get to play it in general, because then it's the same thing with anime and movies and stuff. Like I go into it with such impossibly high expectations at that point that it can't feasibly meet them. So then I inevitably end up being like, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I don't get why everybody thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread. So, yeah, there's plenty of games that are like that. Um, how long has it been? Uh, do you mean since the stream started, Valenkin? 
If so, a little over three hours. Like three hours and ten minutes or so. Waiting for something to happen? Is that a quote from, like, Omori or, uh, I mean, Undertale? Because I feel like I've seen a clip of, or a screenshot of something like that, Mooney, but I'm not 100% sure. of the two. Gotcha. Uh, artificial grape flavoring does not taste like grape. Tastes like undrinkable wine that you use to make risotto. And you don't even get to cook it into something. You have to take it straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do not like artificial grape flavoring. I think the only artificial grape flavor thing that I like or will eat are like grapefruit snacks. Like, in Welch's Fruit Snacks, grape is one of the flavors. Like, I will eat that. I'm fine with that. I really don't like the peach ones uh, with Fruit Snacks. But anything that is not, like, grape Jolly Ranchers, grape lollipops, grape whatever the hell else, no thanks. Never like them. Which is funny, because grape is my favorite fruit. So... Maybe it's because it's my favorite fruit that I'm more critical of the taste. Maybe I don't know, man. But like, I love watermelon, and I also love watermelon flavored things. Watermelon Twizzlers are really good. Watermelon lollipops. Watermelon lemonade. That's not flavored, though. You get the point. Aren't you sleepy? I am sleepy, but I can actually, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's not that late for me. It's 10, 15 at night. Um... Normally, especially on a Thursday, I would definitely stream until like 11 or midnight. Um, but it's been so busy at work lately that I am uh, definitely behind on sleep and energy and stuff. So it's probably a good thing that I did bad in theater today because it's a shorter game. So I can wrap up earlier and go to bed earlier. Compared to, like, Alan Wake, if I had played that, I definitely would have been up until 11 to 12. But, unfortunately, next week is also going to be super busy at work, so I'm just going to have to keep dealing with it. Such is life. What can you do? I guess it's not even because of work. Work adjacent tasks. It's from Amori. Gotcha. Should sleep. I should soon, yes. I will definitely be ending stream within a couple minutes. Um, yeah, my goal for today basically was beat this game in one sitting, which I did, and I had a lot of fun with it. I um, thought it was enjoyable. And then probably just like read some manga in bed for like half an hour and then go to sleep. That is definitely becoming my go-to thing lately, is at the end of the day, I've been watching a few episodes of anime, and then I read a few chapters of manga in bed, and then I go to sleep. Nice way to kind of unwind and relax a little bit. But yeah, I've been catching up on a bunch of anime lately, because I haven't been streaming as much because I've been so busy, so like, streaming I need the energy because I have to talk and interact and, you know. Whereas just watching anime, I'm just sitting on the couch and watching it, so uh, much less energy needed. But yeah, I've been watching a bunch of stuff. I finished solo leveling recently, um, and then I watched Chain Soldier, and then I've been watching... Oh, I watched the Konosuba movie that came out like five years ago. I finally watched that because season three just started and it's a sequel to the movie, so... Um, that was good, and then I've been watching Shangri-La Frontier lately, which has been fun. Um, yeah, just a bunch of stuff I need to catch up on for anime, too. Manga-wise, I finally caught up on Blue Box, which I love. Um, I've been catching up on uh, My Awkward Senpai, which is a cute rom-com. If anybody likes rom-com, definitely recommend. 
I need to finish catching up on Dangers of My Heart. Oh, I watched Dangers of My Heart Season 2 as well, recently. That was good. Um, Mewo, my beloved. Is Mewo one of the, uh... <laughs> uh, uh... One of the characters in Amori? Is that one of the names? Don't push yourself too much, even if it's for streaming. Yeah, no, I agree, Jack. It's, uh... Basically, I have the mindset of I don't want to... Well, there's two parts. Number one, as much as I want to stream, I don't want to do a stream that people would potentially think is boring because I'm already like... You all know because you're watching the stream and you hear what I sound like. Like, I'm not the most expressive. Like, I'm... I have a pretty flatline, monotone voice a lot of the time. You know, it, it, you know, if I get excited or freaked out or scream or whatever, like, you know, it varies. I think it, if I'm obviously excited about something, there's a little bit more going on. But, like, it's a pretty monotone voice for the most part, right? So if I'm streaming and I'm also tired, it's, like, extra monotone. Even less inflection. Um, and I would just be, like, I'm a very quiet person, normally. Like, I don't talk a whole lot. I really, like, the amount that I talk on stream is, like, 500% more than I talk off stream. Like, I am very much the keep to myself type. Like, if people talk to me, I'll respond. But I usually will not start conversations myself. Like, I, unless I have a reason to. Like, if I have a question at work. Or if I want to ask one of my friends something. But I am very much the person who's, like, not the initiator. Um, so, yeah, stream, I really have to, like, amp up the um, uh, blah, 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 blah. talkativeness as well as, like, you know, make sure I don't sound dead. <laughs> Apothecary Diaries is very high on my list, Jack. That is one I definitely want to watch. I've just been more in the mood for, like, more casual shows lately, whereas um, Apothecary Diaries, I know it's more like character drama, so I think I have to be more, like, in the mood, so to speak, as opposed to, like, oh, action-adventure fantasy, easy. Uh, she is a little blob of a cat and very cute, and I love her. <laughs> nice. I'll have to keep that name in mind for whenever I play Omori. Like, oh, that's the one the Mooney was talking about. I like it. It's relaxing. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Valenkin. Thank you. That's Cap and waiting for a week. Uh, yeah, you know, I remembered that a couple days ago. Um, I was like, oh. I did it again, didn't I? Classic me, but it's <sighs> freaking work. I've been so bad with April. Like, March, I set, I tied my record for most streams in a month in March. I think it was like 19. And this month, it's like tied for my second lowest so far, or something like that, because I've just been dead. And I know next week, it's looking like I probably won't be able to stream at all next week until next weekend, too. Which is super annoying. Well, maybe. I don't know. I doubt it. We'll see. We'll see how it's going. But yes, I do need to get back to you on that. There was something else. Oh, yeah. Nope, that just reminded me. One of my work friends texted me and I hadn't responded to that. Oh. Well, there's a reason that everybody knows me as the person who it's hardest to get the hold of. All my friends and family, it's like, oh, you wanna do something with Leo? Make sure you ask him uh, three business days in advance because uh, you can't even guarantee he's gonna see it. Or it's not that I don't see it. It's more that uh, I see it and I think, oh yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. And then I forget about it. 
because it's usually like I see it in the middle of doing something for work, or I see it in the middle of a stream, or I see it in the middle of watching an episode of anime, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I, I don't want to pause. I'll, I'll do it in a sec. Leo don't want to talk to me. You found me out, Oblivion. You unveiled me live. How could you do this? <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, don't want to rush, so I... No, I appreciate it, Oblivion. I appreciate it. I think in May I should be freed up a little bit more after the work event stuff next week passes, but... Um, that just reminded me the next Pokemon set comes out in like three weeks. Oh, wait, no, a month. It's like May 12th or 17th, something like that. I don't know. Voice is very steady. Why, thank you, Mooney. Thank you. Some, it's like, I made videos for a while before I started streaming, and then, I don't know, it takes so much getting used to for me for, like, watching the VODs and being like, oh, wow, I actually don't hate how it sounds for once. Wow, that's awesome. Let's go. Woo. But every once in a while when I watch a VOD, I'm like, why do I sound like that? I sound so bored. Or like my voice will crack. I'm like, dude, I'm 27. What are you still having voice cracks for? You're an adult. Chill. Or my absolute least favorite, even worse than the voice cracks, is when I stutter in the middle of saying something. I think I've talked about it on stream before, how I think my brain, when I'm trying to think of something to say or actually saying something, my brain goes faster than my mouth. So I will talk faster, trying to keep up with what I'm thinking, which is what I want to say, but because I'm talking faster, trying to keep up with it, then I'll like trip over my own words and end up stammering and stuttering. And I'm like, I go back and I listen to, oh, oh you know, <laughs> I don't know how many of you use TikTok. There was a trend on TikTok recently of like when you stutter in the middle of making a joke. And it's like the person who stutters always gets super embarrassed. And then they like smack the person that they're with, which is like, you need to forget that. Don't remember that I stuttered. That's how I feel, but to myself. Like, what were you doing? How dare you stutter doing that? I have to like make a conscious effort to talk slower so that it doesn't happen. But I notice as soon as I start to speed up when I'm talking, then it's more liable to happen. Uh, my boss asking if I can work this week. Yeah, I would say no. Considering that it's uh, already almost Friday, you still have the fever. So you definitely can't work tomorrow. And then Saturday, like, you'll still be coming off of 24 hours without it, probably. So you can't work Saturday. So I would say this weekend is a no-go. Remember a new Pokemon set, but forget to reply to me. <laughs> What can I say? The date's in my... Actually, I don't even know the exact date. I just know it's in May. But it's going to be a good set. You got to do a hand cam opening, Oblivion. I know you have your hand cam set up, because I know you did that plastic model building one. So now you got to do a card opening. In Leo's defense, I forgot an important holidays before, but still managed to remember streaming schedules. <laughs> Nice, there, you know, you got your priorities. Um, but I get it, especially if it's, like, really consistent schedules. Um, yeah. Like, I know, uh, excuse me. Oh, here come the yawns. Yep. Like, zero from Legit Weebs, like, you know, I've known him long enough and watched the streams long enough that I know a couple of the stream dates and times more or less by heart, so I just kind of know, like, 
Saturday morning or Sunday morning. Oh, it's time for Persona. It's time for Daniel Rampa. Might as well put it on. But, uh, I mean, the weebs over there, that's the model of consistency. Not like me, who gets tired and has to cancel a stream. Shut up, you're cute. <laughs> Speaking of, oh, um, I thought I saw at some point like a reply to one of my tweets that had like a femboy Leo thing that I thought was funny and then I went to check it again like an hour or two later because I saw it like in the morning and I was half asleep or something and I was like, oh, that's funny. And then I remembered later in the afternoon, I was like, oh, I'm going to go look at it again. But then I couldn't find it. I was like, did I imagine that? Was, that, was I just tired? Because I know I tweeted something about Femboy Leo. It was, uh, it was an edit I had made of myself that I thought was funny. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. It was because I took a quiz. It was like a personality test thing. I love personality tests. I can't help myself. Um, but it was like a how, like, you know, typically masculine or typically feminine are you based on stuff, you know, like based on historical traits that are associated with men or women, that type of thing. Um, and I think it was something like 15% masculine, 50% feminine. And I was like, damn, like I'm on my femboy arc now. I don't know. I think a lot of those tests are kind of bogus. Like, that was a very old-timey thing with <laughs> some of the uh, stereotypical traits that are associated with the genders, which, you know, they don't really apply nowadays. But I see a five-minute personality test, and I'm like, why not? I might as well. Um, you got the money to buy a set like that? I mean, yeah, if you just wanted to do a few or something that's not bad but right if you wanted to do like a booster box or two then it adds up fast already Friday for me oh right you said it was like 4am for you when I started so probably what, it's like 7.30 to 8 for you right now or so in the morning on Friday I've canceled streams from being tired by just saying I'm busy. <laughs> Oblivion, you're not being honest with your audience. How could you? But now I get it. It's like, it's unavoidable. It's like I said, like if I'm going to do a stream, I want to make sure it's entertaining or enjoyable, right? Like I don't want you guys to have to listen to me being extra monotone and yawning all the time. And, you know, like I want to be engaged with the game. I want to be engaged with chat. So I feel like it's in everybody's best interest, if I'm tired or not feeling great, to take the day off, recover for the next day, and uh, then it will be a more enjoyable stream experience for everybody. Forgot I can't post anything from that account, that's why. Oh, okay, so I wasn't imagining it. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, no problem. I thought it was funny from what I remember of it, though. I did an avatar test and I was Earthbender. I don't think I've taken an avatar one. I have considered doing a stream of just like personality test type stuff. I just don't know if there's enough to like do an entire stream out of it. But I think it would be funny to go through it, see the results. People in chat can take it at the same time, post their results. Kind of like when I did my tier list stream a while back, like I was doing the tier list, but then I also was like, oh, if you guys want to do it, you can send the your completed tier list in discord and then i can look at it because i always get curious temptation rising to send a book of hours personality quiz i made a while back i mean if you want to by all means um i would take it <laughs> it's just a personality quiz um so uh you should be able to send it in i don't know if you're in the discord i don't think so but you could send the link in just in general or whatever in there if you wanted or you could just add me on Twitter or something. And I would probably take it. I mean, I would take it. It's a personality quiz. <laughs> Why not? Up to you. 
totally didn't look up water poisoning. That's why you gotta make sure you don't drink too much. Mm hmm I mean, our bodies are like, what, 78% water or something? You don't want to, uh, poison 78% of your body. That probably, just a thought, probably wouldn't go over super well. If I had to guess. I just opened YouTube out of curiosity because I was curious. Who else is streaming right now? Would you all like to guess how many VTubers I subscribe to that are streaming at this very moment? It's way more than I would have expected for 10.30 p.m. on a Friday, I mean on a Thursday night. Actually, I was going to unsubscribe from this one, so minus one from that number. my OBS go? There it is. Five, too many, eleven. Good guesses, good guesses. Meaning to join Discord, but I'm very tired right now. For now, I'll stick it on Twitter. Yeah, totally fine. I mean, of course, nobody is under any obligation to join Discord. If people want to join, it is free to join. Uh, the invite link is in the description of all of my streams, so you can join at any time. The link is always open. Um, so by all means, feel free. But of course, it is a totally optional thing. You don't get any like extra benefits. It's just, you know, I. it's a little bit more interactivity off stream, basically. Um, but, you know, Twitter totally works. I check Twitter all the time. I should join the Discord. Yeah, <laughs> it's totally not like you were one of the first people to join it. <laughs> you and Master were like some of the first ones to join, I think. Actually, I can check. If I look at the member list, I can see the date that everybody joined. Um, uh, oh, the answer was 12, by the way. Uh, so, Sebi, you were very close. You were only one off. Very good guess. I'm only sub to those that I actively interact with or they stream on Twitch, so for me, it's just you. I rarely check Twitch. For me on Twitch, it's like, the only time I go on it basically is if somebody that I am friends with is streaming on it and I check their stream. Oh my God, they won't stop. Like you and Allura and Rel, like they all stream on Twitch. So if one of them is streaming, I'll open Twitch to like pop in on their stream, but other than that, I pretty much am, like, YouTube exclusively. But, yeah, I sub to all of the people I interact with, and then I sub to a bunch of other VTubers that I like. I mean, it's a lot of, like, agency VTubers. There's a couple indies on there. Um, but, you know, Hollow Live, uh, Phase Connect. Um, what is the name of it? Oh, Prism. I really liked Prism. A lot of their talents were really good, uh, but they actually just dissolved as an agency uh, a couple weeks ago. So all of the talents who were on Prism are now indie, um, which is cool. I mean, they get obviously there's pros and cons to agency versus indie. Um, so they have a lot more freedom now, which I think is cool, but it was a good agency. Like they all spoke highly of it. And it was around for like three years. There was like no drama for any of the three years, which is pretty rare in VTubing. There's a lot of drama. Um, so it was a bummer that, but you know, I get it. It happens. Um, it's up already. I will check that later then, Mooney. Basically only watch Allure on Twitch and that's it. Yeah, uh, so we're in like the same boat then, Master. I rarely use Twitch. We're all in the same boat. <laughs> um, VTuber agency has been crazy this year. Yeah, the amount of VTuber drama that's happened in the first three and a half months of 2024, I feel like it's been more in these three and a half months than it's been like since I even started following VTubers. 
which would have been in like 2021. Like all of 2021 to 2023 doesn't compare to the first three and a half months of 2024. It's ridiculous. I just want to stay in my own lane. No drama, please. Too much drama. I completely agree. I basically have gotten to the point where if I notice certain VTubers or whatever are uh, often the cause or source of drama, then I usually just end up muting them entirely on Twitter and stuff because I'm like, I just don't want to see it. I don't care. This is high school drama 99% of the time and most VTubers are adults. Why are you acting like 16 year olds? That's pathetic. Pathetic might be a little harsh. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I hate drama. I hate arguing. I hate conflict. I am not confrontational. I don't like seeing other people argue and be dramatic. I wish people would just not. Gonna write a diss track on you then? Time to start the drama. Oh no, Oblivion, how could you? My career of being drama free is gonna come to an end. Heartbreaking, honestly. And all at the hands of somebody that I considered a friend. You can't spell friend without end, huh? And this is our end. Oblivion. <laughs> Oblivion. Yes. I love that master. Hello, Scourge. Welcome. Hope you're having a good week. Most of the talents have a very young audience. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. Like, I imagine the average VTuber fan is probably, like, early 20s, between, like, mid-teen and early 20s. Like, I think that's probably the target audience for a lot of VTubers. Um, maybe you could extend it to mid-20s, like, mid-teen to mid-20. So, I mean, it makes sense. Some of those people are in high school. Some of them are just out of high school and they haven't uh, experienced the real world. Um, but it is what it is. I know, I'm... I think ages have come up before as I've been talking to chat and whatnot, and from what I know of people in my chat who have mentioned it before, or like relative age to me, I am older than every person who watches me. At least as of the last time that I checked. Except for some of my VTuber friends, who I know are a little older than me. I'm not gonna say who, and I'm not gonna say how old, um, but... Even the ones who are older than me, they're like only within, you know, it's a couple years. Um, AKA Twitter poop. Yeah, Twitter. I love Twitter because that's where I get. I love art and Twitter is like where I follow all of the artists that I like. You know, I I basically use Twitter 95 percent of the time. It's to like, retweet, and bookmark art. <laughs> um, so I love Twitter for that. I hate Twitter for how toxic and drama-inducing it is. So it's a trade-off of using the social media. Okay, boomer. Ah, my heart. I, will, uh, I am 27. Turning 28 this year. In a few months. Wow, I'm almost 28. <laughs> I'm closer to 30 than I am 20. I'm closer to 30 than I am 25. 
Thought you were way younger. I feel like we have had that conversation before too, Scourge. <laughs> yeah, I think because Scourge and I met, uh, we met at a convention. And I think afterwards, you might have asked me, like, how old did you think I was just based on that? And I think I was, like, within a year or two when I guessed your age, but you thought I was, like, five or six years younger than I actually was. <laughs> you thought I looked like I was still in college, but no, I graduated college five years ago. Five whole years. It was a while ago. It was probably, like, December, like, right after the convention. Wow, you're old. Thank you, Belenkin. <laughs> My Grandpa Leo heart feels so happy to hear that. Um, I think we did. Uh, I'll be 27 this year. So it's not that big of a difference. It's, like, roughly a year. You're technically older than me. I turned 27 in January. So not by much then. Yeah, I'm like half a year older than you or so. But more or less the same age. No wonder you have your shit together. Eh, in some ways. A work in progress in other ways. What can you do? That's what life's all about. Gaining experience and growing. Yay. I've had this song on loop for like half an hour now. It's such a nice song. Exactly. Jack just hit the nail on the head. Minus the gotcha. That's, uh... That's where you get, uh... Irresponsible Leo. I see a uh, new banner come out for one of the five gotchas I play, and I'm like, ooh, I like their design. Ooh, I like them in the story. Let's just, let's hit roll. Oh, I didn't get them. Oh, let's, uh, let's do some farming in the game or farming of my wallet. <laughs> uh, I'm a lot better now than I used to be. Again, it was like, I was at my peak irresponsibility with gotcha. Like, within the first year of graduating, getting a full-time job, and then COVID. So I'm like, I'm working a full-time job with a salary, and I'm sitting at home with no expenses. So what am I going to spend it on? Anime PNGs on my phone, obviously, because I'm a responsible and well-adjusted adult. I guess they gotcha. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, turning 22 in a couple weeks, so I will be around average for like a couple weeks. It's really close. Happy early birthday, Mooney. Uh, turning 23 in July. Oh, yeah, like, again, like the early to mid-20s, that seems pretty reasonable. Very young compared to y'all folks. All that back pain talk y'all are having makes sense. Exactly, exactly. You're you're lucky to be so young, Valenkin. You're a whole four years away, five years away from the back pain. But once you become old men like me in Oblivion, 27, ugh, hits you like a truck. Uh, around average, I actually, that makes me curious. I'm going to look at my stats right now. Let's see. Let's see what my average viewer is. Well, I can't see a specific number. I can see a range, but uh, let's see. Analytics. I haven't looked for a while. Ba, 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 audience. Uh, all time. Uh, yeah. That looks pretty. Wow, actually. Okay, that's surprising. <laughs> um,. So, based on my YouTube stats, uh, Lifetime, my audience is roughly a quarter female, three quarters male. 
and 1% user specified. Which I guess seems about right. Um, just based on regulars who I see in chat and But then for age, my biggest section is 18 to 24, which is 43% just about. Um, so yeah, that is, <laughs> I mean, Scourge, I think you're in that. Uh, Mooney is in that, Belenkin's in that. Um, and then my next biggest section is 25 to 34, which me, Oblivion, I think Master, I think Sebi, I think Jack. So I'm pretty sure that basically everybody in chat falls into those two, which is my two biggest sections. So between 18 and 34 accounts for roughly three fourths of my entire audience. Which is good, I would prefer that bracket over like a lot of uh, a much younger audience. I definitely do not target a younger audience. I'm totally fine if people are watching me, whatever. Like, I consider myself a pretty PG-13 <laughs> streamer or creator. Like, you know, I don't really, I don't play or say a whole lot of R18 things and all that. So it doesn't personally bother me, but definitely my target audience would be that like, you know, 20s-ish. Uh, what was my third biggest? Yep, and then my third biggest audience is 35 to 44. So. <laughs> uh, fourth biggest is 13 to 17. Fifth biggest is 45 to 54. even breaks it down further by gender so I can see like 33% of my whole audience are males 18 to 24 and eight and a half percent of my total audience are females 18 to 24 two percent of my whole audience are women aged 45 to 54 Well, that's just for total views, so. Watch hours and views are probably a little different. I don't know, I like numbers. I think it's fun looking at the stats, entertaining. Woo, sausage party, yeah. <laughs> Woo, 75%, let's go. I got Bay and Nike, Ichika and Karmi and Blue Archive at the cost of my sleep. That's what the farming does for you. Um, I got Bay as well. I really like Bay's design. Uh, Ichika I also got, although I had to get all the way to Pity, which was very frustrating. <laughs> very frustrating. Um, Karami, is it Karami or Kasumi? I don't know. Uh, I didn't get her. I didn't roll for her. I was thinking if I got Ichika, then I would use my Pity for her, but I didn't get Ichika, so... Alas... I think my next big banner is June for FGO. Charlemagne is coming out. Told you your voice is good. That's why people my mom's age watch. <laughs> I mean, whatever works for people is cool with me. If people want to listen, by all means. I mean, I know I've said before, I'm very much a lurker. Like, I am uh, very much the type to put a stream on and then I kind of have it on on the side or in the background and you know I might be playing a game on my phone or I'm working you know I'm half paying attention I'll if it's my friends I'll usually pop in and chat and say stuff here or there but uh if it's like agency vtubers or indies that I don't really personally know then usually I just kind of lurk I 
I have lurked my friend's streams before too, though. Like, like if they have a really good thing going with their own chat and not just like friends, then I'm like, I want them to focus on their actual chat. You know, I don't want to interrupt that. So then I'll just kind of keep lurking. Um, I mean, it's, it's probably not a huge deal. I'm totally cool with it either way. But I'm also a very shy person, so usually I don't say something unless I feel like there's a good time to do it. If that makes sense. Ever since they made autoplay count for views, I don't think that's a great representation. Any uh, yeah, autoplay is... Watch time is a, definitely a better indication. And I do think my numbers are, excuse me, geez, oh my God. This is what happens when you turn 27 too. Not only do I have the back pain, excuse me. I also have heartburn right now, which is like, why? I haven't eaten anything spicy today. Why do I have heartburn? Why do I feel my chest? Sizzling with stomach acid. I don't know. That's what it means to be Leo Lovelace. Okay, let me go back to my demographics, but this time I'm going to use watch hours as my indication. Ah, yes. <laughs> so if I have it by views, for example, if I look at my two biggest bars, my highest number of views come from male aged 18 to 24 with 29 percent and my second highest is male 25 to 34 at 15 percent if i switch it to watch time which is a better indication my number one watch time is male age 25 to 34 with 32 and a half percent so it went up by 20 percent in that age bracket for male when I switch from views to watch time. Whereas my watch time for 18 to 24, it went down by about 6%. So for people who are actually watching and engaging with your content, yes, that's a better way to tell. Ow. Oh. 2% of my total watch time is male, aged 55 to 64. That's surprising. Oh, they have a nice chart where you can compare it all side by side. I love analytics. Oh, wow, I missed a bunch of chats while I was looking at that. Jeez. Uh, Kasumi voice sounds like, or Karmi voice sounds like Red Hood. I'd have to look that up and see if it's the same. Uh, should I wear blue or white today? I'm indecisive and can't decide. Uh, ooh. So blue is my personal favorite color. So I'm inclined to say blue. However, I do think white looks nice because white goes with basically anything. White and black, those are the two colors for clothes, I think, that go with anything. But I am personally biased towards blue because that's my favorite color. And I know people have been like, well, why blue then, Leo? You, your design is red. Well, red is my favorite color for character designs. It's different. But my actual favorite color is blue. That's why my outfit has some blue on it. Even though red is the main one, I still have the blue line on my coat, and I have the blue eyes. Although, I also have blue eyes IRL as well, so... It kind of matches. Uh, wow, a lot of blues in chat. Nice, chat is united on the blue. Blue it is, then. <laughs> Glad chat could help. Um... What's the next game now that this is checked off the list? Great question. Um, so 
for new games that I'll start. Stellar Blade comes out next week, and I will be getting that, and I will be doing that on stream. So that is definitely going to be one of the next new games. Persona is going to continue, obviously. Uh, that's I don't even think I'm halfway through that, or I might just barely be halfway. I don't know. Um, probably not. So Persona is going to be continuing for a while. Um, I will be starting Stellar Blade next week, probably hopefully on Friday, which is release day, uh, assuming my pre-order gets in in time and whatnot. Um, and then, I mean, I did have Alan Wake scheduled for this week, which now I'm not doing because I canceled yesterday and I shifted that on theater to today. So Alan Wake is probably going to be sooner than later. Um, but I haven't officially decided yet, but for sure, Stellar Braid Braid. <laughs> Stellar Blade will be one of the next ones. Uh, and that will be next week. Um, Evolution decided to fail off some organs more than others for whatever. <laughs> yeah. Been warned before that everyone has an existential crisis at some point when they're 27. Mm hmm. Every day is an existential crisis. Why am I working this job? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I acting like this? What is the point of my life? What am I working towards? What do I want to do with the rest of my life? What do I want to save my money for? What are my goals? I feel like almost every day I start thinking about something along those lines. I mean, I have some general things in mind, but not like a concrete plan. But, I mean, that's how you do it. I think general goals are totally valid to just kind of casually and slowly work towards, and then other stuff will pop up as you do that. Right now, saving money is one of my biggest things. feel like Stellar Blade's my genre of game. Nier was the same for me, but I love to see others play. I've seen a lot of people comparing Stellar Blade to Nier. I know there's a demo. I haven't played it. Uh, I was sold on the trailers, and from what I've heard of people who played the demo, they said it was very good. However, I've also seen a lot of people say that the demo is harder than they expected. So I don't know if I'm going to be struggling playing the game. Um, hopefully not too much. But there might be some trials that I face. Seems like it should be a fun game, though. I actually just saw an interview like a day or two ago. Uh, Yoko Taro, the director for Nier, and the director for Stellar Blade had like a co-interview that they did together. I thought it was interesting because they respect each other and they like each other's games a lot. So Yoko Taro was praising Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade guy was praising Nier. Clearly take inspiration from each other. Nice to see. Because I loved Nier Automata, so... Well, it's interesting, because Automata is a game that when I played it, one of my friends had talked about how amazing it was all the time. So I went in with super high expectations, and I finished it, and I was like, it was fine. It isn't life-changing. It was enjoyable. I had some nitpicks about some parts of the story. But I had a good time with it. But for whatever reason... Nier has done the opposite of what a lot of anime and games do for me, where historically, usually I will finish something, and I'm like, that was pretty good, and I give it a rating. And then over the following months or year, as I move further away from it, I start to look at it a little bit more objectively or critically, and I'm like, okay, I gave it a seven and a half. It's probably more like a seven. Like, I think that's a little bit more indicative of the true feeling I have for it as a seven rather than a seven and a half. Nier is one of the rare things that has done the opposite, where I initially gave it a rating, but the longer it's been since then, the more I start to look back on it positively. Not that it wasn't positive before, I look up back on it more positively than I did when I first beat it. Which I think is interesting, <laughs> that it's had the opposite effect. Um, but yeah, I, I liked Nier a lot. Um, and I still stand by that I think the Nier Automata soundtrack is the best soundtrack ever. 
for video games or movies. If I include anime, it gets a little dicier because there's some anime soundtracks I really like, but uh, at least for games, it is definitely my favorite. Minecraft is up there too, but Nier Automata soundtrack, so good. Um, but yeah. Stellar Blade should be more like cinematic, I think, than Nier. You're somewhere around part one to part two of three in percent. Okay, gotcha. So I guess around like 35-ish percent, 35 to 40 percent. Yeah, 35-ish, I guess, would be between part one and two. I guess that makes sense. I probably finished like the introductory part, which is like getting introduced to the team, getting introduced to the main characters, learning about Tartarus, making some initial progress in the story, some stuff is teased, and now I would be starting part two, which is like, the rest of the characters join C's, and the story starts to pick up, uh, antagonists start to become more involved, uh, the battles get harder, the story is getting more focused, and then part three would be like, all right, shit's going down, everybody's on the team, the antagonists are out in full swing. I mean, I, that's just kind of how every story, you could split it into acts like that. Which I guess means, given that I have done seven Persona streams, that it will probably end up being like 18 to 20 streams total to beat it. Long commitment. <laughs> But, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun with it, so I'm fine with playing it more. The real question is going to be, once I finish Persona 3, what replaces that? Do I go right into Persona 4? Do I follow it up with a different Persona game, like Strikers or Tactica? Do I take a break from Persona and play some other stuff? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Because I do have, I think I had mentioned before with streams, I was thinking I'd have four streams every week. That's my goal. One stream would be a longer ongoing game. Uh, you know, like a 40 plus hour game. Two streams would be more mid length game games that would be in the range of like 10 to 30 hours that I'm working through. And then one stream would be like more casual, like, oh, anybody can easily jump into this. Something like this, where I can beat the game in one sitting. Or, you know, like a Bellatro, a Slay the Spire, um, a rhythm game, Hollow Cure, like that type of thing, where, you know, it's just laid back, easy. Houses, as in Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> I do have that on my list as a potential stream game. Um, that would fall into what I, like, the long game. So, like, Tactica or Strikers, I don't think I would have that in the long game. That would be, like, a 30-ish. So that's, like, a mid-length. But, like, Persona 4 or Fire Emblem Three Houses, those I would put in the longer section. So I'd only do one at a time. But I do have Three Houses on my list. Uh, Horizon I do have on my list as well, specifically the second one. Because uh, I have played and finished the first one, but I have not played the second. It's just with the second, I'm waiting for the complete edition to go on sale so I can have uh, the whole experience from the start. So I don't currently own it, but it is on my list for when it does come out. God of War is another one where it's like 30, 35 hours I'd like to play. Uh, Persona 3 Arena Ultimate. Is there a Persona 3 Arena? I know there's a Persona 4 Arena, because I know Judson likes that a lot. song is going to live rent-free in my head for the next week, I'm sure. <laughs> it is so simple and repetitive, but it is so catchy. Like, the tune is just... Yeah, I'm... It's 
corrupting me. There's something about it that's like... Like, it sounds kind of bittersweet in tone, I guess. Which makes sense, because it was kind of an ending song. And I am a fan of that type of tone. Not in real life. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's fine, but like, especially in anime and games and stuff, I like that a lot. Uh, it's P4 Arena, there is no P3, sadly. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Alas, how could they do this to us? Uh, I'm sorry, I got distracted. Looking at some stuff. Prison Warden finally gave me dinner <laughs> at 11, 12. Hey, I mean, better late than never, right? That's one of my catchphrases. Hopefully a nice, uh, satisfying dinner. Like I said, I had heated up pizza because I ordered Domino's yesterday and I still had leftovers. So I had the leftovers today. Woo! Pepper and onion with extra sauce. That is the godly Domino hack. If you like Domino's pizza, order it with extra sauce. That makes it, it elevates it from like a seven or eight out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. I learned that trick from my dad because he always did it. And I have never looked back since then. this your BGM? <laughs> I mean, it might as well be at this point, but uh, I'd probably get copy strike or something. Or not copy strike, copyrighted. I'm gonna say I don't even remember what the menu sounds like. <laughs> Dale gets lost in the sauce. Exactly, Saudi, exactly. Goated with the sauce. Out of all the fast food places, I've always liked Domino's the best. I completely agree. 100%. There's a local pizza place I like, but like for fast food pizza, Pizza Hut, I don't really like. Papa John's, I tolerate. I will have it. It's not my favorite. There's another like local fast food pizza place that I don't like. Domino's though is like, I am literally never disappointed in Domino's pizza, ever. At its worst, it's still good. I have to text my dad because I'm only allowed in my room in the bathroom quarantine. It was the same thing for me when I had COVID. Because um, like I mentioned earlier in the stream, I still live at home. So obviously I don't want to get my family sick. So I basically was confined to the basement, which is where I worked because I could work from home for my job because uh, I can remote in. But I worked in the basement, I hung out in the basement, I have a bathroom in the basement, <laughs> and the only time I would go upstairs was to go in my room to sleep, and it would always be that I would go upstairs when everybody else was already asleep, or not in the house basically, so I wouldn't have to pass them, and I would still wear a mask. Um, if I ever left the basement or my room, I always had a mask, and... I basically lived like that for a week and a half. It was painful. Um, yeah, for food, it was the same thing. Like, my mom would make dinner. And she would just bring it down into the basement and leave it outside the door. And then text me and say, all right, there's food. And I was like, cool, thank you. I'd open the door, I would eat. And it was always on, like, disposable paper plates and stuff that I would just throw away so we didn't have to wash anything. It was like, ugh, I did not like COVID quarantine, to put it mildly. I'm very thankful that, you know, my mom was still making dinner for me and stuff and delivering it and whatnot. Um, you know, that was very nice of her, but 
Yeah, it was very restricting to just constantly be confined to one room, essentially, and just have food delivered to me. But obviously, I don't want to get anybody else sick, so. And when I had COVID, the worst part was I had a horrible, horrible, horrible sore throat. Swallowing hurt all the time. It lasted for weeks even after I started testing negative. Uh, and then I had a bit of a cough. So, uh, coughing with a horribly sore throat, not fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> um, those cheese sticks have cocaine, I swear. <laughs> like the cheesy bread. I don't think I've had their mozzarella sticks, but I do really like the cheesy bread. Dip it in the marinara sauce. Mm. I live in the basement. I mean, I basically do. The only reason I go upstairs is to sleep. Even now. Like, the only time I go in my room is to sleep. I don't hang out in my room. I don't do any of that. Like, if I'm working from home, I work from the basement. Because I have a desk down there. When I'm streaming, I stream from the basement. That's where I am right now. If I'm playing games, I play games in the basement. Because that's where my computer and my PlayStation are. If I'm watching anime, I do it in the basement. Because I have it all set up on the TV down there. Like... I basically spend all my time in the basement unless I am sleeping, eating, or like at work or hanging out with friends or something. But it's nice, like it's basically my space. I mean, honestly, our basement is big enough that I could treat it as like my apartment, essentially. So <laughs> it works, it works. Fellow basement dwellers, Valenkin. Leo describing his life like a gremlin? Am I not, Scourge? Look at me. <laughs> Giving you food prison style? Exactly. Bro is truly locked up. <laughs> My current situation? Hopefully it doesn't last for like 10 days like mine did, though, Sebi. Fortunately for me, it was minor. That's good. That's good. Cheesy bread? It's so good. I was obsessed with like the jalapeno one for a while, but now I just got the normal. I do it in the basement. Leo 2024. Need to get a Leo quotes thing like the weebs. Didn't know any better, I would think you were a kob kobloid. <laughs> Not a kobloid. you last so long streaming um i basically when i'm streaming games solo i really don't like ending stream before i get to a good stopping point so usually i just kind of like push through until i get to a good stopping point in the game like finishing a chapter or finishing a certain event or boss battle or something like this where it's a three hour game just finishing the game entirely. Um, I don't know, I hate having to stop in the middle of things, which is why last Saturday, when I had to stop Persona in the middle of like a story event, I was like, oh my god, I never would do this if I didn't have plans right after. So stubbornness is part of it with wanting to get to a good ending place. And then the other thing is like, I just, I want to try and respond to everything in chat if possible, so it's very easy for me to go on tangents, as I'm sure you've all noticed if you watch my streams. So once I start going on tangents and talking about things, and then if chat is responding to those tangents, and then I'm responding to whatever they're saying about it, it just turns into a back and forth that I, yeah. As Valenkin just said, literally like an hour ago, I said, I think, it said, oh, you know, you should go to bed. I was like, I agree. I'm going to go to bed in a couple minutes now that I finished the game. Obviously, uh, that did not happen <laughs> because it's been another hour and I've just been chatting and hanging out. But so many tangents happened, talking about COVID, talking about YouTube analytics, talking about VTuber drama, um, talking about upcoming games. Like there were so many random topics that came up that I just 
couldn't help but respond to. And I mean, when it's topics I like, I definitely enjoy talking about it, you know? It's not like work where I'm like, oh my god, the last thing I want to do is talk about this data analysis thing and production issue that's going on, you know? <laughs> like, um, But when it's a game or an anime-related thing or VTubing, you know, that's fun, so... But it is also a build-up thing, like... Early on, I streamed for like three hours, generally. And then I played some longer games that, you know, it pushed it to four, pushed it to five, I hit six sometimes... So I had to work up to it a little bit, but I'm sure the more that you stream, the more willing you might be to go longer, I guess. Collabs, it's easier to go longer for sure, because you have more people uh, to bounce off of. Or, you know, if you're getting tired or you're not as talkative, you can kind of count on them to pick up the slack a little bit. And Pros and cons. Like, I really like collabs because I like interacting with my friends on stream um, and co-op games, multiplayer games. Like, that's fun. But it also is harder to talk to chat in collabs. So, you know, when I do solo streams, I do a lot of interacting with chat, I feel. <laughs> that That is a line, Scourge. That's a line. Um... But, uh, yeah, you... I don't know how many streams you've done total. I know we've been in a few collabs. I'm not sure about... I know you did, like, a For Honor one. And I think you did a Souls game one a while ago. Oh my god, my gosh. I look tired, right? Even the model looks tired. Really stream on my own anymore because it doesn't work with my schedule yeah that makes it hard i mean i pretty much always just do it after work but it can be tough some days like yesterday where you know i work nine to five and i have a stream scheduled for seven and by the time i come home and have dinner and you know it's been multiple days in a row of work that's tough and i'm like oh my god like i don't think i have it in me to stream which i hate canceling streams i hate canceling i hate rescheduling but sometimes, you just can't avoid it. Usually on the weeks that I'm late posting schedules, it's because I'm busy, and I'm trying to gauge how many streams I think I can do that week. If I post it by Tuesday, usually I'm feeling good for streams that week. Like this week, <laughs> I had four scheduled, I posted it on Tuesday. But then something came up. But, you know, if I don't post it until Wednesday or Thursday, it's like, it's a busy week. I'm tired. I'm, like, trying to figure out how many streams do I have in me? What games do I want to play? It, it happens. That is a great question, Valenkin. <laughs> um, I and most of the other people who, like, collab and whatnot with them pronounce it as Scourge, like... S-C-O-U-R-G-E. But I'm not sure if that actual string that you just writ, writ, that's not a word, wrote, uh, has a correct pronunciation. If so, <laughs> Scourge could tell you. Scourge is correct. Okay, that is actually how that specific thing is pronounced. Feel my senses fading? I mean, it is 11.30 and you're sick, so... I mean, my senses are fading, too, so I get you. I think you should probably head to bed. <laughs> um, I'm pretty ready for it as well. I'll probably read a couple chapters of manga and then conk out. I might go see the Spy Family movie tomorrow, though. That'll be good. I'm waiting until the last minute to buy a ticket, though. My favorite thing to do is buy, because we have uh, Fandango. So we get to pick seats at, our, at my movie theater. And I like to wait until 30 minutes, 40 minutes before the movie. And if nobody else has bought a ticket, then I will. And I have the whole theater just to myself. 
That's how I watched uh, the Demon Slayer movie when that came out back in like 2021. Um, I was the only person in the whole theater watching Demon Slayer Train Arc or whatever that was called. I will still buy a ticket if other people are there, but if I have the option of being the only person there, then I think that's kind of neat. Um, I don't like pack theaters, though. I will not buy a ticket if it's a pack theater. General public. Ugh, people. Ugh. That's disgusting. No, I, I've gone to busy movie theater. I I saw the Star Wars Episode 7, whatever it was called, Force Awakens. I saw that on release night at a completely sold out theater, and that was fun. But like, I definitely prefer the very empty theater vibe. Um, oh, it's uh, Spy Family, not Spy Kids, Master. Spy Family's an anime. Spy Kids, that is a name I have not heard in a long time. Sweepy we a love ways, yes. I'm very sweepy. Sweepy uwu. Misheard it as spy kids. Uh, I mean, it's 50% the same. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Keanu thing came up a little earlier. I think Jack might have asked about it. I was saying I haven't seen any Keanu Reeves movies before. Oh my god. It's a good thing I made my bed before a stream. And crawl into a nice freshly washed sheets and made bed. Oh, it's gonna be so satisfying. Twenty seven year old Gramps going ooh woo, yeah. That didn't sound like a grandpa, did it? Every once in a while, I can bust out that kind of voice. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Not even The Matrix? That's my dad and I's thing you're missing. There's a lot of classic movies I've never seen. I've never seen The Matrix. I've never seen The Godfather. Never seen Goodfellas. Um... What else is a classic movie I haven't seen? Indiana Jones, never seen it. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, never seen it. Uh, Interstellar, never seen it. Mm. No Country for Old Men, never seen it. Shawshank Redemption, never seen it. I know, I'm breaking everybody's hearts in chat right now. I can feel it. I don't really watch movies. Never seen any of those either. Jack, my man. <laughs> Let's go. I watched a lot of movies when I was a teenager. Uh, pretty much from college on, I just... For whatever reason, I basically stopped watching movies. Like, I'll watch it if I'm with a friend and they want to hang out or whatever. Like, that's fine. But... Yeah, much more of, like, short 20, 25-minute episodes. Definitely more my thing. But yeah, a lot of classic movies I haven't seen. That was an impressive ooh, -ooh thank you. <laughs> but yeah, Matrix I've heard is very good. Er, the first one I've heard is good. I'll need to watch that. Hello, Esme, welcome. My heart's broken, why is it broken? Uh, because I haven't seen a lot of classic movies. Wasn't Scourge supposed to be the cringe one? <laughs> It isn't his name. Um, can we get an Ara Ara? Give us an Ara Ara. Uh, there has been an Ara Ara in the past. There has never been one on my channel. Uh, Esme. Um, used a channel point redeem on Allura's channel when we were doing a collab on her channel. Uh, to make me do an Ara Ara voice, and I couldn't get out of it because he had used his well-earned channel points. I couldn't let it go to waste, but I had to, like, mute myself and practice and everything. I don't know if there was ever a clip made of that. Master might have been there for it. 
I felt so, I know my face turned so red after I did that. 100%. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> you don't think anything of it. It's like, oh, whatever. Yeah, saying ara ara, easy. But to like actually do it in a good voice, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's funny, but it's embarrassing. I mean, all of us did one, I think. I'm pretty sure everyone had to do a solo one. I don't know if there's a clip made of that, though. I know you got the reputation as the Ara Ara guy, though. No, you, you don't have to apologize, isn't it? You're good. It was funny. I knew it was coming. After you got you and Allura, I was like, there's no way that you do not have enough to also get me. And sure enough. <laughs> Embarrassing yourself is 60% of VTubing. This is true. This is true. I was there, I didn't clip it because everyone was so embarrassed that I felt bad. <laughs> I mean, we did it on a public stream, so if somebody were to clip it, it is what it is. We can't control it. I'm fine with people clipping me as long as it's not something that I specifically say, please don't clip it, then it's fine. any chats there last time someone insulted me i just went i made b-movie asmr you can't hurt me oh yeah <laughs> i did see that you posted the b-movie asmr i haven't watched it because i was very confused about what that would be i guess i would know what it is if i watched it and that would answer my question uh i was just so perplexed when i saw that video come up Uh, movies aren't my thing, me too, brother. As a man, my man. I give you a virtual fist bump. Uh, that's what happens when I run out of ideas for a week where... Uh, that would be on Scourge's channel, Blanken. I believe I may have it linked on my channel homepage. Um... Yeah, I think, or I don't know if you can do it in chat. You might be able to just click on his name and then do like go to channel. Um, but I'm pretty sure I have him linked on my homepage as well. Because I have like a little section towards the bottom of it, which is just like uh, friends and stuff. Friends of the lab. That's the section I have it. Um, so I believe Oblivion is also linked there. Esme is linked there. Um if you were curious about uh, people I've collabed with and stuff, um, they should all be linked. Forgot about B-Movie? I don't know if I've actually... I don't think I've ever watched B-Movie. I just know the memes. Uh, JB did the whole B-Movie from start to finish with like a dozen other ASM artists. Oh my god. <laughs> it's such a meme. Why is my OBS chat not updating? My actual chat on the screen is updating above my head, but my OBS chat just stopped. Blasphemy. Oh, there, like five messages just came in at once. Feel your movie pain at this point, I just can't be bothered. That is exactly how I feel. It's so hard to say like, yeah, I have two hours right now that I wanna sit down and commit to watching this. But like, on the flip side, which is hypocritical, I can easily say, oh yeah, I can totally sit down and watch six episodes of this anime, which is two hours, which is the same length as the movie, which is two hours. But I feel like I'm accomplishing way more when it's six episodes of a show. And it's also less of a, less of a commitment, because if I get tired after three, I can just stop. If I get tired after four, I can just stop. Sometimes I sit down thinking I'll watch three and I only watch one and then I fall asleep. Who knows? Glad you can do that. I have to force myself to watch just one or two episodes. Yeah, I mean, I've been there with certain shows or depending on my mood and how tired I am, but like there are periods where I will go like two or three months without watching a single episode of anything. But then I'll go periods where like I binge watch like 10 shows over the course of a month 
totally depends on my mood. I like to watch all of it at once. I definitely... It's interesting because I started off as a binger. And then I think at some point there was so much stuff coming out that I was interested in that I started watching weekly. So then I was just, you know, I had like 10, 15 shows that I was keeping up with every week. But at some point then I got overwhelmed and uh, I was like, I can't feasibly keep up, keep up with 12 seasonals at once. It's so tough. So then I started to fall off, and then it was like I was watching five, I was watching two, and then at some point I stopped watching weekly, and I went back to binging. And when the season ended, then I would just binge things. And that's kind of where I'm at, but I want to get back into weekly if I can, because it's just so much... You know, I do anime awards and stuff. Like, it's tough come December, January if I'm binging an entire show every two days. <laughs> but if I just keep up with it throughout the year, which is what I'm trying to do right now, then I don't have to binge at the end of the year and I can be more productive and ahead of it. I don't know. Watching that after end of the stream. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I totally get you. I do like binging because especially something that's very story heavy or like suspense or whatever, it's like brutal waiting week to week. Like if I was watching Steins Gate Weekly or Summertime Rendering Weekly, that would have been killer with those cliffhangers. Uh, jellyfish can't swim i am not currently watching it but it is on my list to watch for spring right now i'm still working through the winter stuff i think so far from winter i've finished i finished free Rin, a sign of affection dangers in my heart season two uh chain soldier solo leveling and i'm currently watching shangri-la frontier um but uh yeah, Jellyfish Can't Swim is on my list. I think that's, uh... Is that Dogakobo or PA Works? I think it's Dogakobo. I forget. I'm pretty sure it's one of those two. Um, but I did hear good things, so glad to hear you're also liking it. <laughs> I have to bump that up my priority list. I have like 15 or 16 things in my spring that I want to watch. It's ridiculous how many good shows are in spring. I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of it all. Um, and there's still like another eight things I want to watch in winter. Like the first two seasons of this year have been crazy. Yeah, just from winter, I still want to watch Apothecary Diaries, Classroom of the Elite Season 3, Delicious in Dungeon, uh, Hokkaido Gals, Mashal Season 2, Undead Unluck, and Witch and the Beast. And then in spring, yeah, oh my god, there's 15 shows on my list for spring. No, sorry, there's 17 shows on my list for spring. Astro Note, Blue Archive, Demon Slayer Season 4, Girls Band Cry, uh, Go Go Loser Ranger, Grandpa and Grandma Turn Young Again, which is like a rom-com, Hibike Season 3, uh, Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night, Kaiju Number 8, Kanasuba Season 3, Mission Yozakura Family, Mushoku Tensei Season 2 Part 2, Spice and Wolf, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime Season 3, Train to the End of the World, Unnamed Memory, and Whisper Me a Love Song. 17 shows that I want to watch just in spring. And then I'm like, so how am I supposed to watch weekly when there's 17 things that I want to watch? How am I supposed to watch 17 episodes a week while I'm still trying to catch up on winter? It's so, it's impossible to keep up. <sighs> it is what it is. No gushing over magical girls. Yeah, it's not really, I'm not super into like, super etchy things i don't mind like mild but i know gushing is like super super etchy which is fine like if i'm in the mood it's fine but it's not usually my go-to binge for the win i do know you're a big i know i think oblivion you've said your strategy is like you wait and then like during the spring season you'll binge the winter shows and then by the time you're done with that the summer season has started so the spring is done so then you can binge the spring shows during the summer, and then it just kind of keeps going. Stuff I want to watch has stretched back like a year at this point. I'm so far behind. I get you, man. I mean, I have like 200 plus shows in my backlog, so <laughs> I totally get you. Uh, slime. Oh, I assume you mean slime. Um, 
late a season has been mid so far. That's unfortunate, because I really like season one. I did think season two wasn't quite as good as season one, so it might just be continuing that trend. Talking simulator for a lot of the episode. Uh, it depends how much I like the story and the characters for something like that. If I really like the cast or the mystery or whatever, then I can put up with it, but yeah, it can be tough. Um, ReZero Season 3 is also this fall, actually. 17 rookie numbers, pump those numbers up. <laughs> I know, I should be watching at least 20. I actually have 21 on the full list that I'm interested in, but those 17 are like the ones that I actually will watch, and then the other four are if I have time. Um, said I would go to bed 30 minutes ago, Leo 20 minutes ago. Please never stop. Chat loves chat. That's the thing, like when chat's into the chatting and I'm into the chatting, it's hard to stop. There's like no good stopping point. I have to get some sleep so I have a good night. Sounds good, Master. Hope you have a good night and thank you very much for coming to the stream. As always, I will see you next time. Once watched Scourge's B-movie ASMR, I'm deceased, couldn't last more than two minutes. <laughs> uh, living up to the name then of the embodiment of cringe. Hopefully it was two uh, cringe-filled and enjoyable minutes. <coughs> I'm sorry <sighs> for unleashing such a, a cursed video idea onto the World Wide Web. You can already tell my thoughts are slowing down. You get an aura. Man, at some point, actually, does Zero have an Ara Ara redeem? Because I know he has redeems through like Streamlabs or something. I just, I don't know if I've actually looked at the redeems that they have. You were supposed to be my comfort streamer and you call yourself Tentacle Daddy. <laughs> yeah, it's quite the nickname. Oh my god. Ara 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 ara. Ara ara. Ara ara. Ara ara ara. I have to take my second cough drop of the stream. My throat is dying. But I guess that's what happens when you spend three hours playing basically a visual novel and you're reading the entire time and then you chat for two hours. So I apologize if you can tell that I uh, have a cough drop in my mouth. I am what the people have molded me to be. <laughs> Here comes another yawn. Oh, my freaking tracking's about to die. There we go. I like how it's super obvious when I yawn. The model tracks it so well. <laughs> love you but I think I need some sleep all good man all good it is late it is almost midnight and I have uh gone an hour 45 longer than I thought I would because I've been chatting so much <laughs> um I had told myself oh I've been so tired I need to catch up on sleep I'm gonna have a short stream and I'll go to bed early and I'll catch up on sleep that did not happen and I already know Saturday's gonna be long too, because it's Persona. And all of my Persona streams are long. So much to do in those games. You need some sleep. I sure do. <laughs> we all do. We all do. It's getting late. Unless you're Valenkin, then it's early. I stayed a lot more than an hour, that's for sure. <laughs> Be 
you just don't want to end stream so you can get all your energy out so you don't have to talk to me. Damn it, Oblivion, how could you out me like this? Now everybody knows that I'm specifically doing this so I can avoid talking to you. My master plan, it's foiled. Everything I've worked for, ruined, shattered, tossed into the trash. Damn it. Damn it. Back to the classic. All right, well, I probably should actually end the stream, um, given that it is almost midnight and I definitely <laughs> still need to catch up on sleep. So I will call it there, but as always, thank you very much for coming to the stream. I hope you had a good time with Bad End Theater and putting up with me basically reading out loud for uh, three hours straight and then talking for two hours straight. You got a lot of uh, <laughs> Leo Lovelace talking tonight, that's for sure. Uh, good night, 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 Leo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night, good night to you as well, Saudi. Um, and everybody else who is on the West Coast, and I mean, not West Coast, the uh, Western Hemisphere, and it's going to be going to bed. Good night to all of you. Good morning or afternoon to everybody in Europe or Asia who might just be getting their day going. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Exactly, Blanken. Good morning to you. <laughs> um, hope everybody else has a good night. Uh, streams for the rest of the week. I will be doing Persona 3 again on Saturday. 2 p.m. Eastern, which is what, like 6 UTC. Um, so that should be another lengthy one. And then Sunday, I will post what I'm doing sometime this weekend. Uh, I was just finalizing some stuff, so uh, there will be a Sunday stream probably at around dinner time, a little bit after. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye out. I'll update the schedule on Discord, uh, Twitter, and YouTube when that is all set. Um, is that everything? I think it is. So yeah, thank you all again very much for coming to the stream. Hope you had a good time. Hope you have a great rest of your night or day, depending where in the world you are. And hopefully I catch you on one or both streams this weekend. So until then, I am Scientist from the future, Leo Lovelace, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.